in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed can any man really have the right to teach about him based on what experience you can teach on financing because you have so much with respect to the richest man you can teach about academics with respect to a professor standard you can teach about family life with respect to a model family but what is the reference when you teach about the Holy Spirit? What standard qualifies us to talk about Him? This, this is not a, an issue of condemnation. This is an acknowledgement that we know so little. So little. So little. The best of us, the greatest of us is only a toddler. In the matters of the spirit the highest of us i'm telling you this paul at the end of his life said that i may know him what what, what is the accolade is it because you heal the sick what now is the reference that you will use to teach about him the holy spirit the most misunderstood personality We're under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. I am under the shadow of your wings. Truly, your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. We are under the shadow of your Your presence is what has made our lives what it is, their spirit of the living God. Tonight I will only attempt, only attempt, only attempt by your grace and mercy 
to help your people know you what pride to try to teach men about you who can who has the experience who has the experience who has the power and the wisdom by what standard but we beckon on your grace because we are partners on the strength of intimacy we pray oh god that the communication of our faith tonight will be effectual let it edify your body lord i pray that i will teach with accuracy let your people understand you for the kings to arise for the mantles to return for the boris to arise mordecai is to arise hey ali ali Hallelujah. Help us tonight, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. I just want you to sit down quietly and just carry something to write. Be very sensitive tonight. From my time of prayer, I knew that this series would be an extraordinary one. And the Spirit of the Lord told me that He wants this message to spread like fire to the body. There are not many messages where the Lord speaks to me about it. This message will create an effect in ministries, in lives. See, no matter what you think you know about the Holy Spirit, just drop it aside and listen. The maker of men. The maker of men. The maker of men. The Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Give us wisdom the holy spirit part one demons will cry out tonight i tell you i tell you yokes will be broken tonight is another miracle service just the teaching you dare not call him the holy spirit is not just a force as you will be learning when you learn his presence you will see how cheap satan is An unfakeable reality you can't fake it no mimicking if it is not him then it is not him it's as simple as that Zechariah chapter 4 we're going to read two scriptures tonight as we begin the Holy Spirit is the series we'll read it and then I'll give you the course content and then we'll start Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 inside outside online if you can follow one to read then he answered and spake unto me saying aha uh -huh, this is the word of the lord to zerubbabel saying not by might not by power but by my spirit so he shows you the key he's revealing something to zerubbabel don't waste your time this thing is not by might it's not by power but it's by my spirit. Second scripture very quickly. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. Let's read it everyone. It's projected. One, two, read. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. And the communion of the Holy Ghost. If you can have it in Amplified, that would be great. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just keep the scripture there. The love of God and the communion. It says the grace, favor and spiritual blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God and the presence and fellowship. Listen. The communion and sharing together and participation of the Holy Ghost. 
these three mysteries should be with you the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god you have these two alone you will fail in life and the communion of the holy spirit so let's take down the course content tonight is part one we're going to consider the concept of the trinity very quickly just some little theological housekeeping the concept of the trinity and then the person of the holy spirit the next thing we're going to consider is the person of the holy spirit we're going to be examining who the holy spirit is then number three the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the holy spirit the ministry of the holy spirit then number four the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the spirit it's not the same thing i said the third thing is the ministry of the holy spirit and then the fourth thing is the ministry of the spirit the bible says he has made us able ministers of the spirit the ministry of the spirit hallelujah wherever we stop tonight we'll stop and then we'll take now let's start with the concept of the trinity i want to give us some theological background so that we will really have that understanding look up please theologically speaking there are certain words that we use in the body of christ but you will not find direct reference to them in the bible there are certain words that are of common usage among the body of christ and um, i hope you know theologically speaking that christianity what we call the faith life was an extension it came as a branching out from judaism are we together judaism is a practice that is hinged in the revelation of the god of abraham isaac and jacob that's where the journey so the jews from where there is also a branching out of islam a branching out of judaism today and certain different branches you notice that most of these religions from the story of abraham they agree then as you branch different kinds of confusion and misunderstanding starts so there are certain words that we use in the body of christ but they are not directly referenced in scripture one of those words is the word rapture we use it to mean a system where believers are transited out of this realm you know there are references like that but you do not find a single word rapture in the bible there is no mention of the word rapture now when you study systematic theology it's a system where you are able to use scriptures and draw meanings it is the basis for establishing doctrines it is the basis for explaining scripture according to systematic theology scripture must explain scripture are we together now for any teaching to become a doctrine the theological condition is that number one that thought that line of thought must be referenced in the old testament that's the first condition condition number two jesus who is the bridge between the old and the new must communicate that thought too in his earth work and then number three it must be referenced in the life of the early church any thought that is referenced in the old testament testified by jesus himself and experienced by the early church um, fulfills the condition to be a doctrine so you you can use one scripture to buttress on a point but that scripture isolated in its own cannot form a doctrine are we together now yeah so 
there are many scriptures although the word rapture is not mentioned there are many scriptures from the old testament jesus himself testified of a possibility that a time will come when he can take people to where he is in john 14 remember i go to prepare a place when i prepare the place i will come and take you so that where i am there you may be also and then paul in his pauline epistles began to open to the church the possibility of a mass exodus that he was using that scripture to comfort bereaved people and he said that they should not weep like those who do not have hope for a time will come there will be a trumpet that will be blasted and they who are dead in christ will arise first is that true and we who are alive will be caught up that experience of being caught up is what was coined that we call rapture so you cannot say rapture is not a doctrine or it's not in the bible in fact it's one of the seven tenets what we call the tenets of the christian faith i will teach you in a separate series there are seven tenets like pillars of the christian faith if you are a christian there are seven major truths you must believe number one you must be don't write it i'm just giving you a teaser number one you must believe in the mystery of the incarnation god becoming a man the bible calls it the mystery of godliness you can't just believe in a savior just like that the first thing you must believe is that there is a supreme god in heaven are we together now and then you believe in the incarnation you believe in the virgin birth you must believe in the earth walk and the sinlessness of jesus you must believe in the fact that he died and died on the cross if you believe jesus died in a motor accident you are not a christian there he, he must that cross must be there are we together you must believe that when he died he didn't go to heaven he went to hell because that's where sinners go to really hades the place of departed spirits and gehenna the place of the dead there was a transaction that happened there you must believe he rose up after three days not one week you must believe that he appeared to many in the streets of jerusalem you must believe he ascended to heaven according to hebrews offered his blood upon the tabernacle of heaven then you must believe in his return if you do not believe these things you are not a christian it's as simple as that no matter your denomination this is the id card of christians these seven things another series will explain them another word i'm still giving an introduction to the concept of the trinity another word is trinity you never find the word trinity mentioned in scripture there is no reference theologically speaking from genesis to revelation where in these 66 books you hear the word trinity are we together now so i want to establish it because when we are talking about the holy spirit there are many denominations today sadly who do not believe he's a person who do not even believe in his existence there are many christian sects who have all kinds of debates and all of that so before i begin to talk about this most precious personality i must establish from the word of god is there such a doctrine as the doctrine of the trinity the triune nature of god three persons coexisting in one is it biblical and is it true so what is the proof of the triune nature of god the first evidence i'll give you a few scriptures and i want us to hurry up because you will need this to be the foundation of your confidence as we learn about god and then the holy spirit media you will help us we need a lot of speed genesis chapter 1 we'll look at verse 1 to 3 then we'll go to 26. the first reference of the possibility of the existence of god manifested as more than one person genesis chapter 1 it says in the beginning god now i want you to know that the old testament was written in hebrew a uh, part of latin was also added to it but largely hebrew and then the new testament was written largely in greek and aramaic are we together now so the expressions um when you read them from the greek context greek and um, hebrew sorry is a very rich communication it can break words one word can have several meanings based on whatever context this is what was referenced here english calls god god but in the hebrew it can tell you whether it is plural 
or singular so the bible says in the beginning god the word god there in the hebrew is elohim and elohim is always in plural the singular is eloha one of the parties so we see here that the bible is referencing based on the hebrew manuals that this personality is not just an individual god created the heavens and the earth then verse 2 and the earth was form was without form void and darkness was upon the face of the deep the hebrew rendition of darkness and voidness is tohu wa bohu it is darkness and confusion the same word that is referenced in isaiah chapter 60 arise shine for your light has come behold darkness and gross darkness the same word is used here i'm just giving you some theological foundation and then the bible says and the spirit of god now take note the first single personality of the trinity revealed from scripture is not the father not the word who we now call the son jesus yeshua but the spirit of god are we together now it says and the spirit of god moved round the face of the water so we see one manifestation of the trinity verse 3 and god said elohim 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 let there be really the the context here is actually eloha but i'm saying god at work elohim because he is speaking are we together he didn't just say god appeared are we together but god spoke the word so we see the word we see god we see the spirit are we together now then in verse 26 it says an elohim the same word is used again said let us let us a classic confirmation it didn't say let me an elohim a discussion in heaven going on let us now maybe i should tell you that the original names of god or the titles god was never called father the concept of god uh being called father was a revelation that jesus brought are we together now yes the word father means abba comes from the greek word it means your source and sustainer but father like a procreator a progenitor of a personality was never used in the old testament for god are we together they understood fatherhood but not referenced to god they knew him as the almighty god they encountered him but that knowledge as father his original name as revealed to the people was el shaddai el shaddai el shaddai the deity that is limited the expression there is the multi-breasted one like a mother breastfeeds her child now he has such abundance of supply it's an attempt to explain his limitless dimension and then jesus according to revelations 19 his name was never known and called jesus except even by prophecy it was emmanuel are we together it was a name that was given by the angel to mary that they would call him in his earth work his original name john 1 1 revelations 19 was and will always be the word and then the spirit of god now the bible uses a very interesting word he never really began to express him as the holy spirit notice that he called him the spirit of god um are you following me when you call him holy spirit you are right but classically speaking you are wrong because god is a spirit and he is holy jesus is a spirit although he ascended with a body he is holy are we together the holy spirit as a person is a spirit and he is holy you as a person you are a spirit and you are holy so if i call you holy spirit it's still not it's still theologically correct so we just call him holy spirit because of the unique reference to him but it is rather an attempt to describe him the name the standard name that the bible calls him is the spirit of god no man knows what is in the heart of a man save the spirit of that man 
the spirit of God. I will use the word Holy Spirit for, for us, but I, I just am giving us a background. So we see in Genesis 1 26, let us make the Trinity. The next reference, very quickly, at the baptism of Jesus in Matthew chapter 3 from verse 14 to 17. Matthew chapter 3 from verse 14 to 17. Please give it to us. But John forbade him. This is the baptism of Jesus. Look up everyone. John is baptizing people now. And then all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. Behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is coming to be baptized. And then John, you know, he said, no, 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 no. I also need this baptism. And then why will you come to me? 15. Jesus said, suffer it to be so that scriptures will be, all righteousness will be fulfilled. And then he permitted him. Verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, so we see Jesus, God in the flesh, the Son of God, by reason of their office, the second person of the Trinity. Then the Bible says, when he came out of the water, lo, the heavens were open. And what do you see there? The Spirit of God, another personality. Jesus is in the earth. The heavens are open. We see another personality descending in the similitude of a dove. Then the Bible says descending like a dove and lighting upon him 17 and a voice so we see Jesus on earth the Holy Spirit is coming upon him and a voice of another personality who is not the Holy Spirit and is not Jesus speaking this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him and all of that so I'm showing you from scripture that the Trinity the concept of the Trinity is biblical Two more proofs ready matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 this is jesus now teaching the disciples himself jesus himself is teaching the disciples matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 matthew 28 matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 matthew 28 matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20 and jesus came and spake unto them saying everybody listen all power the word there is exousia is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 go ye therefore this is jesus teaching and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father in the name of and in the name of the holy ghost jesus himself acknowledged the fact that they were a trion reality in the in the realm of the spirit the godhead expressed in three personalities ready for one last proof acts chapter 7 verse 54 to 59 acts chapter 7 this was when stephen was about to be martyred the bible says something happened when they heard these things that stephen now the martyr the first recorded Matthias, when Stephen was teaching them on these things, the Bible says they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. 55, we are reading to 59. But he being what? So we see the Holy Ghost in Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost, one of the personality of the Trinity. He said he looked up to heaven and what did he see? The glory of God the similitude of the face of god another personality and what did he see again jesus standing at what so full of the holy ghost here on earth god in heaven and then the holy ghost at his right hand read on and he said behold i see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of god you can even stop there the point has been established so you see that from scripture old testament the gospels and the epistles i reveal to you that there is such a concept i know why i am for some of you this looks basic but many people who represent different sects some not even believers are going to be listening to this message and it's important that we start from a theological foundation so that it does not look like this is a pentecostal or charismatic phenomenon the concept of the trinity is established by the word of god there is such a concept
now let me tell you a few things and i am very emotional as i say this the subject of the person and the ministry of the holy spirit in my opinion is the most misunderstood and most neglected teaching in the body of christ the subject of the revelation of the personality of the holy spirit i don't think that there is scarceness with the teaching of jesus as the son of god i don't think there is scarceness of the revelation of the father especially new testament believers we talk a lot about the fatherhood of god but the person and the ministry of the holy spirit most believers have almost no idea about the person of the holy spirit now the church especially the 21st century church is not in ignorance as to the reality of the power of the holy spirit we watch televisions every day and we see people falling from church to church you come for koinonia and you see people shouting and flying all around but the person this entity this personality called the holy spirit is what i want to introduce to us tonight Who is the Holy Spirit? Who exactly is the Holy Spirit? We must know who he is. Why is he so important that Jesus had to need him? Jesus walked upon the earth, never was able to do any serious kingdom thing until he came. Who is this personality so important that the saints of old, although they did not really know him, but they could not resist his influence in their lives when he came upon them they could not articulate they never had a relationship with the holy spirit they could not know who he was they only related to him based on his influence upon them there were only two people in the old testament who communicated such an appreciable dimension of intimacy with him number one was samuel the prophet number two was david the man after god's heart these two personalities seem to have accessed deeper dimensions of their work with the holy spirit a prophet that the bible says his word did not fall to the ground it was Sam, the psalmist that said cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me who is the holy spirit now let me tell you something the holy spirit is not a bird the holy spirit is not a dove you have to believe this the holy spirit is not candles with fire on it the holy spirit is not anointing oil the holy spirit is not water the holy spirit is not wind the holy spirit is not sound all those things are similitudes of his operation similitudes of his operation but not him the holy spirit is not an influence he's bigger than an influence who is the holy spirit number one the holy spirit is god the holy spirit is god he is not like god he is not a friend of god he is not a mentee of god the holy spirit is god every description that you give the father every description in terms of honor and acknowledgement and power and might it suffices to communicate the same description to the holy spirit now the difference of the trinity is not the power and the might but the system of their functions and their offices it is based on that that we now classify the father as number one the son jesus as number two are we together and the holy spirit as number three the holy spirit is not junior god the holy spirit is not the inferior part of god he is god in every way in every system deserving of worship deserving of honor deserving of trust so the holy spirit is god number two the Holy Spirit represents the unlimited presence of Jesus. Benihin calls him Jesus unlimited. The Holy Spirit represents 
the unlimited presence of Jesus when Jesus walked upon the earth he was bound with a body listen give us quickly please John John chapter John chapter 14 verse 16 to 18 John chapter 14 verse 16 to 18 the Holy Spirit a manifestation of the limitless presence of Jesus so it is it is fair and scriptural to say the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited without bounds when Jesus walked upon the earth he could not be everywhere at the same time it is the Holy Spirit that makes it possible for every believer to receive Christ he is the representation of the presence of Jesus on earth and in the heart and life of every believer and I will pray the father this is Jesus speaking and he will give you another comforter you've heard the word the Greek rendition is alos parakletos alos and heteros these are words that mean one of the same kind or one of another kind when you say alos it means the same in quality and species like the cat family are we together the bird family when you say heteros it can mean many birds but not of the same maybe a dove and an eagle they are not the same so we have alos and we have heteros here it is alos parakletos another comforter that he may abide with you forever next verse next verse verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the world listen jesus is saying the world cannot receive him why he says because it seeth him not so the first reason why the carnal man cannot walk with the holy spirit is why because he seeth him not now facebook and the social media has taught us that there is a possibility to relate with a personality you have never seen before facebook came they taught us something i think in secondary school or primary i don't know which one pen pal something that you write letter and post to another stranger who replies you but now with facebook you can communicate with a personality you do not even know and from his expression you can even know he is not happy yet you have never met him the person is in brazil you are in nigeria and you are communicating praying together growing together and you can even say how are you my good friend the world does not see him neither knoweth him an encounter not awareness the world cannot have an encounter with him because he is not the way you encounter physical men this is a spiritual encounter the two reasons why people cannot experience the person of the holy spirit don't forget this number one because they cannot see him except it is given to you by the grace of god you cannot see the person of the holy spirit with your optical eyes you can see the expressions of him you can feel the power of his presence you can see the influence the wind is in the similitude of the holy spirit you may not see the wind but you can see the paper it carries you can see the clothes it dries that's how the holy spirit is so you cannot you believe there is wind because you see it drying your clothes picking papers and occasionally dust can form a tornado and this is the effect of the wind but the wind is not a tornado the holy spirit represents the unlimited presence of jesus in the earth number three who is the holy spirit the holy spirit is the wisdom of god the holy spirit is not wise the holy spirit is the wisdom of god look at me of the trinity the holy spirit represents the wisdom of god you have to understand this the wisdom of God that's why Jesus had to wait for him to come so that he will walk in wisdom the Holy Spirit is the wisdom of God number what number four the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the presence and the power of God not just the conveyor but the revealer only the holy spirit can make the presence of god 
and the power of God real to men. Listen, without the Holy Spirit, no matter what miracle you see, it cannot change you. I hope you know in the Old Testament they saw miracles, yet they were not converted. In the New Testament, they saw 5,000 people fed by five loaves and two fish, correct? They saw the water turn into wine. They saw Jesus walking, yet they still doubted him. John the Baptist himself, who commissioned Jesus in ministry, doubted whether or not he was the Messiah. Jesus resurrected, and when he resurrected, the Bible says he went to his disciples. He said, but some doubted. Why? Because they had not received the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal the presence and the power of God to men. See, let me tell you something. That's why there are people who can carry anointing. They can sit in a meeting. You can be dispensing the gifts of the Spirit. Accurate prophecy. You can see someone fall under the anointing and roll and get up. And at the end of that meeting, someone can be nodding and say, Bros, are you there now? I see we didn't attend the meeting. Powerful meeting with signs and wonders. But without the presence of the Holy Spirit, there is no conviction. There is no change. There is no transformation. Jesus sent the 70. Are we together now? Jesus sent the 70. Thomas was part of the 12 and the 70. Thomas used the name of Jesus. Casted devils. But when Jesus resurrected, he said, no way. Until he comes and I put my hand in his hand. And then Jesus came, he said, Thomas, do it. He said, blessed is he that has not seen. Blessed is he that has not seen, but believed. The conveyor, the revealer of the presence of God. Who is the Holy Spirit? Let me give you a shocking definition number five. The Holy Spirit is the author of scripture. The Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. The same way Benihin is the author of Good Morning Holy Spirit. The same way Bishop Oyedeko is the author of covenant wealth or a covenant of prosperity. The Holy Spirit, this book belongs to him. It was not authored by Zondervan. It was not authored by um, um, White Taker House. This Bible, scripture, was authored by the Holy Spirit. You are a hypocrite if you try to read his book and ignore him. The author of the Bible is the Holy Ghost. Two scriptures. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 and then 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. For the prophecy, listen, came not in old time by the will of man. Luke did not write the Bible because he was intelligent. Listen. John did not write the Bible just because he leaned on the chest of Jesus. Isaiah did not write the Bible just because he had to write. He said the will of man was too small to have written this Bible. Look up. There is no man that wrote the Bible just by their will. No. It takes more than willingness to write this. There must be a personality and an influence. A compelling force. 90% of the people who were used by the spirit to write the bible were not educated they were illiterate so how was the details of the character of god so captured with minimal error in spite of their personalities some of them never met themselves but see the synergy and the consistency of their communication no prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of god spake as they were what influenced the same word, the Holy Ghost, drove Jesus to the wilderness. So men wrote, they speak and later documented it as moved by the Holy Ghost. Listen to me carefully. I, I may want to write one book now. Maybe translate some of my messages into books. And I can tell the media department or we get a professional editor and say, take one, two, three messages. I need 
the transcripts of all of them and I sit down and edit it does it mean that is that person that wrote the book please respect him he is the author of this book men of God hold this book and they never know the author they preach it they write other books with reference to this and never give honor to the author they give honor to their wives thank you for motivating me on the computer while I type they give honor to their children thank you son for not being stubborn while I wrote the book and they ignore the owner listen there is something called plagiarism plagiarism is an offense correct when you take somebody's thoughts without due permission and without making reference how many people have plagiarized the spirit of God we use his words every time and every day and nobody has been arrested and we never give him credit if David Dam catches somebody recording his song and making money from it they will first share it into half and then take him to court and say no way it came from God but through me you are not going to just read from are you getting if somebody carries the koinonia worship team song and just runs with it like that they'll sue the person to court yet 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 we take everything that is of the holy spirit he gave us unrestrained access to use it as though we wrote the book look at how i quote scriptures as if i was there i can quote it then i will be stupid to not acknowledge him the holy spirit is the author of the bible second timothy 3 16. second timothy 3 16. i want you to read one to read all scripture is given by what is the word breath is the word pneuma the greek is ruach an expression a manifestation of this of the holy spirit all scripture how many all scripture all scripture not some not a major part all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect and all of that so the holy spirit is the author of the word write this down christianity is not a religion christianity is not one of the four thousand religions on earth that's quite an information you want to know i don't know what's the current maybe somebody has invented something from january till now now that recession is on somebody must have come up with something but the last time i checked there were at least four thousand religions on earth isn't it amazing four thousand plus with followers all with followers you can go and register it officially your religion state your tenets of faith prove that it works they give you a patent to to smuggle people from whatever religion into yours christianity is not a religion it has never been and will never be religion is man's attempt to manage his confusion about god religion is man's attempt to find god without the agency of the holy spirit religion is man's attempt to create an explanation of the realm of the spirit and the dealings of god without the assistance religion is the product of man's pride religion is a direct product of man's pride his refusal to accept that there is god but accepts that the realm of the spirit is real so people argue oh the sun is there the planets are moving around it and there are millions of galaxies and all of that and all of that and this one if the sun is too if the earth is too close to the sun if it's too far and then out of all of that the scientists who have succeeded in doing that tells you there is no god and the bible gives that person a name it's called a fool he said only a fool will say in his heart but these ones did not even say it in their heart they've written it in letters they have blogs for it only a fool will say in his heart there is no god look at me if all of a sudden 
you enter this place and you see this fan and this keyboard and this mic and I told you that some metals were just moving around and then a wind blew them and there was some electromagnetic force and it just came together and formed a mic and reduced down to Tosin's height and then another one became a pulpit how intelligent do I sound? So, to tell me that some cosmic bodies flew from Mars, another planet had a big bang, boom! Then the water molecules suddenly had, uh, what they call that thing? Frogs, that thing that toads carry, like fins. And then started growing out leg, and then became one ugly thing, and then eventually grew, and then became something else, and then became black and ugly monkeys, and then from there my great-grandfather was coming out, I, and then, look at how dull those things are, but we believe them. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh. Christianity is an experience. Christianity is a revelation. It's not a religion. What we call Christianity, the faith life, the work of a believer, what was committed to us by Jesus is a revelation. It's an experience. It's an experience. It was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church the holy spirit birthed the church not only did the holy spirit father jesus the holy spirit birthed the church jesus was not ashamed to call the holy spirit his father he said my father in me there is my father who is in heaven but there is my father who is in me abba my source my sustainer So it was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church. Listen, we talk a lot about Christianity. Many zealous people have died in villages. Many people have been martyred, but we have ignored the Spirit of God. Why we have ignored Him is a mystery. He started the church. He started the church. And today we drive Him out of our churches. We drive him out of our cathedrals. We call him a nuisance. We say he is too noisy. We have sent him out of our families. We have sent him out of our businesses. We have sent him out of our lives. We have sent him out of our ministries. We have sent him out of our homes. We sent him out of our children. We sent him out of civilization. We sent him out of government. We sent him out of our finances. The Spirit of God. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. My assignment tonight is to bring him to your consciousness. That he is a person. Write this down. The Holy Spirit has a definite form. He's not an amoeba. He's not like a boneless creature. No. The Holy Spirit has an exact distinct form. The reason why he does not reveal his form ordinarily to people is because he wants Jesus to be glorified, not because he does not have a form. Are we, are we together now? You have to get this. When you are in the realm of the spirit, you can see the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's very difficult for you to understand this because, Pastor Femi, come. If this is Joshua Selman. I, you cannot believe that I am in Pastor Femi's house or I am in his heart. That possibility cannot be understood in a three-dimensional realm. The concept of omnipresence is not a reality that our civilization is used to. There is no, that, that ability to be omnipresent is not there. That's why the internet was allowed by God to show us 
that omnipresence is a possibility i can be in my room right now scattered across over 45 nations of the world there are different people connecting right now and they are hearing at the same time some with phones some with laptops some seated right now as soon as this series is over we will upload it and in minutes literally minutes people all over the world are downloading it omnipresence is a reality the internet has shown us that it is possible there is a station where facebook is zuckerberg is a person but he has multiplied himself through a mystery are we together so they say are you on facebook it's the same way saying have you given your life to christ but there is a personality called zuckerberg there is facebook office but there is facebook in your house there is facebook in your phone and whoever does not have facebook is not part of zuckerberg are you seeing that now so how will you say it is not possible for the holy spirit to be living in you and to work with you you can have facebook in your phone but you can meet with the person zuckerberg and be in the real facebook office there is a real form there is an office today you can snap called facebook but there is a similitude of it zuckerberg is in everybody's phone whenever you say zuckerberg the phone facebook is the representation of the presence of zuckerberg so when you gave your life to christ yes you were born again but jesus is in your heart it is true but in your heart in the person of the holy spirit the person jesus is in heaven seated today with a solid body he will return with it so when you say i belong to jesus it is true but the seal is the holy spirit he's the one who validates that your claims are true more on that next week when I'm, I'm teaching you on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. What do I want to get today to teach you? 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. I want us to dwell in the understanding of the person. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Of the Holy Spirit. Let me talk about these three things. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says and the love of God he says and the communion koinonia fellowship intercourse sharing together participation of the Holy Spirit he said these three things should be with you number one the love of God the love of God is an expression of the benevolent nature of God It's an expression of his generosity his, his fortitude to express his nature in and to and through men the love of God Paul is saying if you want to walk and do business in this kingdom the love of God must be at work in you the love of God is revealed in the person of Jesus Christ and also revealed in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Jesus did not come to the earth just as a suggestion of himself he came in response to the father's love he came to prove the love of the father that's the first thing paul says we should know the love of god i'm not dwelling so much there the second thing he says we should know is the grace of our lord jesus christ what is the grace of our lord jesus christ it's not just unmerited access we're not doing a whole teaching on grace but grace is not look, look at me grace is not unmerited access alone that is just a dimension of grace grace is a generic terminology that is used to express any and everything that comes from god any and everything that comes from god is called grace are you seeing now it's not just salvation anointing is grace wisdom is grace my definition of grace is given in the bible every good and perfect gift that comes from above is called grace it's not just unmerited access unmerited access is a dimension of the operation of grace if all you know about grace is just unmerited access no the power to perform is grace because it is not your own you are giving it The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
then he says the communion please give us amplified let me dwell here and then we'll pray the communion i'll be teaching you the next time we meet on the ministry of the holy spirit but the starting point of the journey of your walk with god the first thing he wants to achieve in your life when the holy spirit comes to you is fellowship partnership is a product of fellowship 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 there are so many people who want partnership but they do not want fellowship partnership means to walk with him that's that's the section four or so of our course content the ministry of the spirit that's where i will teach you signs and wonders miracles raising the dead healing the sick increase multiplication signs and wonders that's the ministry of the spirit that is partnership with him but the starting point of a believer unfortunately most of our prayers are largely prayers directed towards our needs towards warfare which is important but very little of it is a system built for fellowship fellowship and the fellowship of the holy ghost the personality of the holy ghost not just his ministry not just his power the holy spirit is a real person real person real person he walks with you he lives in you he represents the presence of the holy spirit in your life the presence of god in your life but he walks with you when the holy spirit comes into your life come darling when the holy spirit comes into your life listen the first thing he wants to achieve is not to use you for signs and wonders that's what you want so you want a sharp sharp impartation let me just fall down roll around roll around stand up and all of a sudden i look around and i say look better invite me because i have power many people know his power but they do not know his person are we together imagine a woman who has been eating her husband's money and never knows him what is his name i don't know what is his best meal i don't know what are his best colors i don't know where is he now i me too i don't know he just left home and uh, whenever he comes he knows ah, but you are rich it's his money you have his wife you must be an irresponsible wife correct yeah. the holy spirit there are so many things we don't know about him and we don't care the average pastor talks about him but does not know him our lives are very it's a demonstration that we are very ignorant of him we do not see the ultimate ministry of the holy spirit in your life listen is not to speak to you is that you and him will be so intertwined that you become an expression of his reality the same way he's an expression of the reality of heaven he is the one who makes thy kingdom come possible in your life so when people see you you are so bound to him you look like him you talk like him you walk like him your life is an effulgence of his presence i introduce to you tonight the person of the holy spirit he does not belong to pentecostals listen carefully he does not belong to people in lagos he does not belong to western elites he does not belong to those who can speak english and can read king james how many people go to the villages and do evangelism and dare talk to them about the holy spirit when you come and people are well dressed in suits like me say now these guys are candidates for the holy spirit but you see one mama in the village who cannot speak english I don't mind these people you see that many of us are here seated right now nobody ever introduced him to you they told you about Jesus you cried and every time you pray Jesus can you hear me and he looks in heaven and says I love you and I can hear you but you are not sincere I sent somebody to you you ignore the person I sent and you claim to love me no no we have ignored him and he has watched us like a gentleman in our pride and confusion we have done everything we have done we have been taught that the moment you receive him you must be a jim christian 
a fiery brother or a lady that is going to marry a man of God and you say me I, I, God has never spoken to me about ministry I'm a quiet businesswoman Holy Spirit you can just go and remain in Koinonia your team and they really need you there you see that attitude how many worshippers sing about him they write songs about him we twist our tongues on stage about him <laughs> God God this and that we don't know him we don't know him it's one thing listen it's one thing for God to be with you but it's another thing to be with God God can be with you as a person but that you be with him that means you have released your will to say yes Lord the Holy Spirit wants to reveal himself the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not know him I'm calling us way beyond the realm of power this is way beyond the realm of miracles let me tell you something pastors leaders much more than miracles let the miracles be a derivative of his presence if they have they can happen in the absence of his presence because you can have the anointing the same way you can use my ATM and withdraw money the ATM will not refuse because my identity is on it the disciples did not know the Holy Spirit yet they went and they were raising wheelchairs casting out devils let me tell you that you cast out demons please listen carefully that you cast out demons and heal the sick is not a sign that you know him no 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 for even the demons believe in God they tremble so many people in the body of Christ the moment you see a man of God walking miracles and I'm not against it moving you know somebody rising from the wheelchair you just assume that Kai, this guy knows the Holy Spirit no. no many people know him as an influence they know his power they know what his power can do but they don't know him because when you know him he alters you in a very remarkable way the proof that you know the Holy Spirit is that you submit your will for his characteristics to begin to find expression in and through you. You see that? Yeah. When a demon, you've seen people now, you've seen people manifest time and again under the influence of spirit here and in different meetings. Notice, you can, for instance, you can see this lovely lady right now and assuming there is a spirit attempting to influence her, the moment you attempt to cast out that devil, she can start crawling on her knees. This is not something that she should do as a human being, but the spirit is trying to execute his characteristics. So when the person of the Holy Spirit is at work in your life, your life becomes an effulgence of his characteristics. You don't just say, um we are angry people in our family that's how we are i'm anointed but we are angry if he lands on me i give it to you even god you know beat me i beat you god no go those those stupid statements that people make they don't know him i have seen many anointed people who do not know him personally i sincerely consider myself not even to know him i know that many people say ah koinonia the whole name the ministry of the holy spirit my prayer every time is holy spirit reveal yourself to me while i was preparing for this series i was almost ashamed of myself i said truly 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 what am i now going to say about him that's why many people describe him because knowing him is not something it's like trying to teach you about your wife Jimmy. it's difficult i can only describe her she makes cake because i have a product in my house but is she cake she has lovely sisters and brothers wonderful we can only use descriptions but do you know the best way to let men know him become an expression of him an expression of him when your life vetoes culture all those listen carefully all those embargoes that make you look like a Yoruba man all those embargoes that make you look like a Kogi man all those irresponsibilities that make you look like a plateau man a kaduna man when they are swallowed up by that relationship they know that somebody else has oriented your life 
are you getting what I'm saying now very important you can be born again casting out devils but everybody looks at you they can trace you so naturally they say ah this guy's jealousy is from this state they are like that they are, oh no forget that he's anointed they are like that but when they can hardly describe your earthly identity you have switched to a true relationship with a personality that you are so intertwined with him that people can look at you and guess and say where are you i don't know whether you are from rivers or you are from plateau state or delta and you tell them i'm from zion the zion of god truly speaking the same way when you see a jam bite in a university even if he's 40 years you will know he's a new student he's an adult outside but when he enters that institution he will try to be matured but you look at him you know that no this guy is not used to this are we together the lingua franca the way of talking the way people are doing there is a popular pothole that everybody in that knows if you, you can with your eyes closed you can jump in then he falls into it that's a jam bite he's not drunk he's just new these are realities with the holy spirit when i look at your life and the characteristics of the spirit are not manifesting there i know something is wrong anger bitterness we think these things don't matter the person of the holy spirit was designed to remedy these labs so on a good day based on my culture based on my village based on where i come from i cannot stand and look at it she should kneel down and lie down self because i mean i'm a man i'm a king he comes into your life and introduces who god is to you he shows you who god is and says in the kingdom that you so love and respect jesus that you so admire this is not how he is and he not tell he doesn't tell you what to do he influences you to become it the power to become not the information alone to become the power to become can anything good come out of nazareth you are talking to a man who has met the holy spirit without him nothing good can come out of nazareth but with him with him with him with him the person of the holy spirit is the mystery the mystery that turned his tamara like benny Hinn to become a world-renowned figure there are many people i have gone for meetings and i've seen signs and wonders but never felt his presence he was almost absent in that meeting signs and wonders can be happening but he's not producing conviction people are just clapping but nobody is living with any sense of conviction because he's not there when you enter Benny his meeting whether you are dead or alive you know that the spirit of god is there signs and wonders are just a confirmation but you know let me tell you how you know a man of the secret place it's not miracles presence 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 not just when you are playing keyboard presence there is a presence if this lady sprays perfume very nice quality perfume and i hold her like this after a while is it true that i should begin to smell that perfume when you walk in a restaurant at the back of the restaurant where they cook and the firewood is there and you claim you were there for two hours cooking rice and you leave you should not smell fresh that place should implicate you no matter how neat you are I should see palm oil somewhere in your cloth or sweat you should smell like that rice or smell like smoke or smell like the kitchen you can't come out and you are still looking like this and say i was cooking rice not gas stove no it's a sign you were not there how many people claim they know him and they think because somebody flew under the anointing is just a sign no sir no sir listen I tell you the secret of koinonia is not just miracles there are ministries that work in 10 times more miracles 10 times the miracle that this ministry has worked in put together if Benny Hinn should show up here they will all happen in one night but brothers and sisters the difference that presence that's what creates conviction 
so you can listen to a message you already know everything about it yet it will pound you and change you and you find yourself on your knees that's something that even when your parents say you should do it you didn't do it presence you know him when you can prove that you carry his presence you know him when you can prove the reality the reality you know a lot of people see me and they say apostle joshua selman has a call you know revival helping people experience god it's not really a call that's not yes i have a dimension of a call to reveal the person of the holy spirit but it's even if i'm talking about finances or i'm talking about whatever that presence that presence that presence just like some of you are listening to me now there's someone seated outside the wind may not be as favorable as you want yet something is happening to him that's what can make somebody who is a non-christian sit down outside and you are talking about what is not directly salvation but a presence lands on his head you see him shaking and just sitting it's not every shaking that is just anointing that carried people it's the effect of his presence his presence his presence i'd like you to close your eyes and pray one minute and say lord not just your power a revelation of your presence pray pray the presence in my life not just power for miracles you are in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god he says listen and the koinonia the fellowship that the holy spirit is not an archangel please the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not the firstborn of the angels no he is called the angel of the lord's presence but the word angel there means the messenger of the lord's presence the conveyor not the slave of god no 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 the holy spirit we have ignored him so much spirit breaker break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls of unbelief and doubt and fear Break our walls down Come down. You were brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. He's brooding over every darkness. He is causing light to shine from darkness. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from darkness. That's what he's doing in your life. He is brooding over every darkness. My God is causing light. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing light to shine from. Prophesy one more time. Lord, you are brooding over every. You are causing light, light, 
listen the Holy Spirit is the one who taught me the word I remember let me tell you next the next time we meet I will share with you a lot of stories about my work with the Holy Spirit how the Holy Ghost started with me the Spirit of God is not power many people want power they want somebody to rise from wheelchair because you think that's what will bring members have you not seen signs and wonders producers no his presence his presence is a product of a real relationship do you know him do you know him do you talk to him do you respect him is your life an effulgence of his characteristics show me how he dis he took that anger out of your life show me how he's taken your tribe and culture out of your life you are brooding you are causing light to shine one more time you are brooding you are brooding over every dark listen I've shared a bit of my experiences with you people when I would be in the room lying down and I would see a mist like fog what you call fog a mist the shape of a man standing there a real mist next the next time we meet I'll share with you all these encounters a real mist and brothers and sisters I will be frozen not just under his power his influence every part of me is shaking like a leaf for hours I don't know what it is like things are entering me and leaving me I cannot even explain is it that he's speaking to me is it impartation is it deliverance I don't even know all I know is that like a hand upon me and I tell you I remain like that for hours sometimes I will not even say one word one word it's not all this fake trying to pray and check time and say it's two hours let me steal so that no 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 his presence defines your longevity his presence defines how you pray his presence defines what happens you don't tell him nah -uh. his presence till today that is a practice i will never trade for anything no matter who i become or what i become listen let me tell you something the moment the moment you say oh god give me tea i bind every devil you're not going to experience his presence but calm down and set the atmosphere spirit of the living god you are welcome here i give you my life take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me this is you praying now not give me tea and bread take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit affect my life breathe on me as i look to you for life Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. You are the Holy Ghost. Let me show you what I do in my secret place. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Hey. The Holy Ghost, take your place. Hey. Take your place. was primarily 
designed as a spiritual system to know him to meet with him prayer was designed primarily as the system that conveys his presence to you there is the warfare dimension of prayer there is intercession there is supplication there is the prayer but he said when you pray pray in this manner abba father listen who art in heaven not give me tea give me bread i must marry i need a child he said your kingdom your influence your person come let me tell you why many people's prayer lives are dead it's not because they cannot pray in tongues i know many people's prayer life my prayer life is one of the richest points of my christian life my my prayer i pray that one day during a vigil here after we do anything we, we will pray i want to show you what i do in the secret place my prayer life is not a boring time you know why because i don't carry all these things that people i don't enter his presence just disturbing him and talking stupid things let me tell you there is a strategy that the devil uses for your prayer life the moment you want to pray he tries to make you weak you will even think you don't have the strength for five minutes time of prayer and then this is what many of us do you just stand up oh god i've been telling you about this thing oh god my job is coming tomorrow no you don't need his presence you need power for that one when you want his presence be ready to give him time this hurry hurry thing that people do you will not find him that way no presence i let worship begin to set the atmosphere i have made i have made an altar you see that an altar i have found the night time to be my best time of not just intercession and warfare alone but deep intimacy because in the daytime your phone is ringing somebody is disturbing you see don't ever give an excuse for why you don't seek him i'm married i have 10 children i i am i am um, an accountant we finish in the bank late you always have time for what you love hallelujah yeah. no. i'm yet to see what can distract me when i'm having deep fellowship with the holy spirit my phone can ring to hell anything can happen you must you you use desire and respect to keep his presence not just faith desire and respect come and you are praying the holy spirit your your boyfriend hey, holy, um, holy spirit how are you um, uh, my boyfriend how am i holy spirit how are you um, no 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 you are not serious and it's not just moving ba, 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 ba. and you are running ba, 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 ba. that's warfare not fellowship when you are ready for fellowship you let him define the modus operandi of the prayer session he is lord over the prayer session there are times i go to pray and as soon as i get there immediately do you know sometimes let me tell you what happens sometimes i can be studying my bible or even just relaxing i know when his presence shows up now his manifested presence the moment i begin to sense his presence around i try to discern is this just wanting me to pray or something immediately i go and lock my door the holy spirit loves privacy he's a very private person forget that you see his power like this the holy spirit there are things he will never do and show you in public no sir thank god for corporate gathering but the specifics of his dealings with you must be in the secret place sleep me no That's why many people's prayer lives are not rich let me tell you when he comes the first thing that happens 
is his that man to learn it learn it the presence of the holy spirit should affect your spirit soul and body when he comes it's not just by faith you know he's there his influence envelopes you this is how people become strong presence carriers not just power carriers presence Benny Hinn was describing one time, you know, he's my mentor in that area. And Benny Hinn was describing how he was preparing for meetings. Do you know? He said when he's preparing for meetings, it is directly from the secret place. He would just bath. Ask anybody who knows me. I know many times we are coming directly from a trip. But Koinonia here, especially Miracle Service, it is from prayer and fellowship straight. You see me stand up and come here not just no no matter how many minutes stand up from watching football and just say i mind you let me just wear my tie quickly who are you playing games with you want to come and cast out devils you want to come and change somebody who they use a spell to keep him a non-christian for 30 years who do you think you are that you want to speak in two hours i remember i was teaching one time on um, revelation of heaven and hell he was outside one um, at is it an imam or ustas one gentleman he studied arabic he was seated outside while the teaching was going on i mean the presence of god was pounding on that gentleman and the next thing all of a sudden outside here the overflow the heavens were open for him and he had a vision of jesus way before an altar call he, i don't know where that guy is now but that kind of born again, there's no going back. Encounters are not products of power. Encounters are products of a person invited into your life and the effect of his presence. This encounter thing that you see people talk about, different ministries, they write all kinds of the supernatural. When they say the supernatural, let me tell you what they mean. A man of God who comes and somebody falls down, falls down, a few healings here and they say, man, it was a powerful meeting. Let me tell you, an encounter is an experience that makes a person and a thing real to you. It doesn't have to be visionary, but it must be supernatural. Are we together? Imagine if all of us here, inside and outside, imagine all the people here that we become true presence carriers. Do you know do you know the dimension of the kingdom you will produce in the life of people dimension all these many discussion and counselings you just come and stand near somebody and a presence there is an invisible personality with you I tell you I give you two or three minutes you see that person shaking the person is not shaking just because they are not ah, help, 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 I'm sorry. The person is not shaking just because there is an anointing. The person is shaking simply because you think it's power. That's what people say. That this is not power. This is presence. You go into a business meeting. You carry that cloud. You go to your home where there is a shrine that they smuggled somewhere. You don't need to know whether they planted it in a football field, under whatever. Just carry that presence like the ark of god in the house of obededom and you watch what begins to happen one of our ladies here was telling me i think she went home and she said she just played one koinonia message and when she played she said it was like human beings were running physically out of the house presence 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 balaam caused them and he turned and so no 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 the shout of a king his voice his presence is in their midst let me tell you what i will explain to you next week but the key to walking in strange levels of health and freshness physical biological freshness is not just rubbing goat milk cream and all of this let me tell you the presence of god can revitalize revitalize are you a christian revitalize all this issue of somebody 20 years you are looking like 30 sluggish you are uh, this and that <clears throat> let his presence roast away all that chaff out of you in all sincerity and in all truth 
I truly consider myself to be stronger and better and happier than ever. His presence. How you know he's with you is joy unspeakable, full of glory. It's called the joy of the Holy Ghost. Ah, in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy in my heart only comes alive every time I hear there's a joy in my soul in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy in my soul only comes alive every time the world is full of sad people it's angry and sad people you know why my wife offended me my husband offended me they didn't pay salary this person did this the government is wicked Buari is not a nice man this one did this um osimba joy is not doing well this one is doing this let me tell you joy is not a commodity that you can get on earth joy is one of the blessings of his presence joy joy is not just laughing like a fool the ability to sustain and you ignore the storms that your you can see people in see let me tell you in the olden days when they were going to kill missionaries before they would bomb they would blow them they fed them to lions lions and Peronero will sit on his throne in a theater and they will bring out one of the saints. Do you know how the guy saw? They took human beings and tied them and then they lit them to be the torchlight that he will use to see. Human beings roasting to give light. And many of them before they died, they sang amazing grace. They said, no, 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 no. When you laugh in the midst of the storm, it's not natural. The Holy Ghost is a sign that you are aware. They were about to stone Stephen. All this frowning around, thinking you are the first. The devil will cheat you. You must learn a system of joy. I know there's no money in your pocket, but don't allow. The first sign of depression is that it has a way of taking away joy. When men are about to die, the first thing is they stop talking. Ask the doctors. They are angry. They have entered into a state of acute depression. But he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Strength. You see why many people are weak? You will never come and meet me like this. Ah, life. Joy. Joy unspeakable. You can't fake that one. His presence gives me joy all the time all the time it doesn't mean everything just happens the way i want no there are all, there are too many people to annoy you every 24 hours that's what satan wants as you are sharing the grace somebody matches your your leg by mistake and you say how about say, what uh, what uh, allow me to tell you sorry i was about to say it and it spoils your mind i said this coin on here it's just because we are serving god otherwise your joy is gone is your joy so small rich in joy he said for with joy shall you draw it's one of the reasons why many people don't get miracles haven't believed they don't have joy the joy of the lord that is your strength they don't have it see let me tell you something some of you came to koinonia sad angry depressed as if the whole world is on you when there is nothing else you have keep your joy in spite of all the sadness that surrounds me and this joy that I now have it truly comes alive every time I hear your voice there are times that we go for meetings and the hospitality is not at its best sometimes it can be so annoying because we've traveled so far and you see the people wasting time maybe keeping us so long in the airport to pick us those things can bring anger and all of a sudden I remember the joy of the Lord the joy of the Lord if you remember your bank account to be happy you will soon die if you remember the presence of your child if you remember that oh I have my certificate under under 
one newspaper that I wrapped. If that is why you are happy, this world does not have room for that to give you joy. Do you know many people try other things trying to get joy? They try education, they try marriage, they try money, this money thing you see. They try everything. They try bullying others. They try politics. No. The true source of joy, joy unspeakable is the Holy Spirit. Look at what happened to Job. A man boils, lost his entire estate. Dogs were licking him. He was seated in the ashes. The wife had looked at him and he said, though he slain me, yet will I trust him. My joy. Uh -uh. Satan has not cheated you if he does not succeed in making you ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what else leaves you. If the Holy Spirit is in your life, convert that fellowship. Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. Listen, tonight is a night of restoration because some of us, you were not like this. Listen carefully. That's not how you started with God. There are people here scattered across the day you became a pastor, the day you became a man of God, you became a reverend, the day you married a pastor, the day they gave you a position of a president, that's the day fellowship died. No need for fellowship again. I'm busy. Busy for what? Busy for what? I, I now have a job. You know, before I, I wasn't working, but now my job requires that I'm in Brazil today, Portaco tomorrow, I barely have time. Hey! spirit cultivate fellowship with him your life would have been 10 times better than it is if you did not ignore him now you may say he's in me but you ignored his person i can have a visitor in my house and leave him in the parlor in anger to prove to him that you are wasting my time and enter another parlor and be doing a business discussion is he in my house yes but are we in fellowship no don't say God is in my heart. Don't say the Holy Spirit is in my heart. Are you engaging him? I know you prayed. Oh, I prayed about it. What did he say? Me, I have shall prayed. If you pray and did not have an instruction or a direction from the word, you have not prayed. The confusion in the life of many people today. Listen, there are many there are many things in people's life. There are people today who have traveled to geographic locations where they have no business being there. Somebody just got up and felt like God was sending him to um, Australia. The Holy Spirit was not consulted. You just felt it was just a, a rumbling in my stomach. And you got up and got visa and went and you are almost dying in Australia. There are people who they just sat down and they ignored him and started churches. They had prayer meetings. They had evangelical meetings and just assumed, Kai, I think we are large enough to start a church. And they started it. Think how many things have gone wrong in our lives sincerely because we have ignored him. Think how many people right now are regretting their marriages because they ignored him. My mother said I should just marry anything and I just married. ignored him. He told you have three children, you had seven. You are seeing what is causing you now. He said, we ignore him all around. Think of how he has cautioned people many times. And we refused. Our stubbornness and stiff-neckedness. Tonight is a night of genuine restoration. There are many people, you used to walk with him, his presence. The Holy Spirit would wake you wake you at specific times there are people who have that encounter where he would wake them but now you threw him out the holy spirit is like um in fact when you study certain hebrew studies he's like a woman that's where you get the word roak hakodesh you see that it's a feminine characteristic if he's not invited he does not come if you keep him in the parlor he remains there forever you tell him, Holy Spirit, enter my house. But parlor, bedroom, and the first toilet. That's, that's where you should. Don't ever enter my kitchen. 
you will keep eating nonsense and have a beautiful parlor because the area you allow his influence is the area you see the glory of God don't say he's in me did you invite him to your finances his presence not his principles we try to learn Bible we go to theology schools we go to Bible schools and we never consult the author I told you he's the author of scripture He walked with people in the Old Testament. Are you not seeing how he turned a little boy called Samuel to a wonder? He called somebody looking like me, Samson, and made him a judge over Israel. Look at the people he transformed. He turned Deborah. Mary said, how shall these things be? He said, don't worry. The father of this child will be the Holy Ghost. The power of the highest, the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the possibilities of God. Listen, let me tell you. Everything today that is happening that is good i learned something from bishop Oyedepo. he said everything that is good credit it to god everything that is bad credit it to my not hearing him i adopt that principle if there is anything that is good in koinonia the wisdom from the system of the messages if there is anything that is bad in koinonia i take responsibility it is a revelation of the area where i've not yielded to him so is your life so is your life you gave him access to your academics look what his presence is doing you literally sit down in an exam for 20 minutes you don't have an idea all of a sudden something comes in your life and you begin to write even things you know that you did not read you gave him permission there but you rejected him in your finances and you say look you know this economics we have to do it with intelligence and oh how gentle he is he will truly step back truly step back the psalmist said cast me not away from your presence he said take not your holy spirit from me it's not enough to have him have you allowed his person to influence your life that's what we're talking about look at many of our parents he's not an influencer of their decisions they have used experience and look at the things that are happening in their lives because they have ignored him you are too young to master life your age is too small to navigate the vicissitudes of life the oldest person on earth is not up to 150 years trust the ancient spirit is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. Is the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. Is the Holy Ghost, Seal of the Age to Come. Is changing I woke up this morning and I got a very sad text from a man of God. I remember talking to the man. He said he wanted to start ministry somewhere. And I told him, I, I said, I think you need to relax. I look at you and I do not see, based on the description of the kind of ministry, I don't think I've seen intimacy in the Holy Spirit. And he ignored me. He just forgot everything. And he went to go and start the ministry. And he sent me a text this morning. He said, I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do he said for the first time in his life early this morning he was contemplating suicide i can tell you not with the holy ghost impossible suicide where from the voice that can show you a way where there is no way the holy spirit when the nation of israel were trapped he said i will send my angel before you that was the angel of the Lord's presence to speak not just an angel like Michael no Mary how shall these things be seeing not that I know not a man he said the power of the highest please hear me the secret to you doing what has never been done in your family is not anger is him all of them embraced the spirit you you are not embracing anything you just say i'm born again i will be successful it's pride you are a joker nobody succeeds without the assistance of a spirit i will teach you partnership next week the ministry of the holy spirit 
tell you his ministry to unbelievers his ministry to believers and his present day ministry to the church but tonight I want you to know that the Holy Spirit does not just want to be in you he wants to walk with you and the Lord walking with them and the Lord walking with koinonia and the spirit the author of the Bible opening it to Joshua Selman not that you go on YouTube and download a message and say ah this Greek word you write it coin them together and go and preach no the same way where you meet an author he autographs on the copy he gives you and you know that you met with the author to you I will run my beloved you've captured my heart listen come can you surrender your life to the Holy Spirit I'm not saying be born again that's not what I'm saying donate your life Holy Spirit I donate myself I'm tired of what I can be without you and my lifetime is too short to keep guessing and later find out I've wasted my life so I hand it over to you are we together to you I will run my beloved that songs of Solomon like the prodigal son who the father saw him and he ran embraced him hugged him put back the robe of royalty the signet ring and said my son was lost but now i'm found many of you have left him you left his influence and you went to do your own thing i'm not just talking of it doesn't have to be bad but if it's not him you will still suffer how many hired servants do my father have they live in plenty and here I am a son of the kingdom feeding on pigs and my benevolent father is there but I must run to him before he comes I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son but take me as one of your servants he said and when the father saw him afar off he ran one thing I know with the Holy Spirit, all he needs is for you to take one step and say, Holy Spirit, I ignored you. I have ignored you in my life. The moment a guy came into my life, he just took away my brain, took away my sense, took away you. Would you dance with me? Lover of my soul To the song of all the songs Sing it one more time Would you dance with me Listen, let me tell you how I prepare for miracle service. I lie down with my paper and my Bible. I don't just get up and say the sick are coming. Spirit of the living God, I am limited. Thousands of people are coming. Probably thousands and millions of others connecting around the world. I am too small to heal them. I am too small. And I mean his presence just mantling me. And I'm saying, Lord, right about now there are people. The venue is packed full. The troubles that people have is too much. I can't be the one to solve it. And then he tells me, don't worry. Partnership. Let me show you one scripture before we round up. Give me this scripture, please, quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. I hope I'm right. It just came to my spirit. Please quickly, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. I never walk alone. I know he's with me. 
for we are what laborers together with God we are laborers partners Shalakota Salabatea partners 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 there is a role I have to play there is a role he has to play I'm a partner with him I never walk alone I would have died if I'm the one leading Koinonia alone no I'm too small I don't have that wisdom and experience my life is too small to be the way it is by my own strength young Gicho wrote a book Holy Spirit my senior not my mate Holy Spirit my senior partner in his church he has a big chair like you find in the Anglican that chair is for the Holy Ghost he said I cannot be sitting down in front and the Holy Spirit is nowhere you may not put a physical chair but open up your heart and say this is for you forever forever and then he will show you things I told you he is the wisdom of God he comes into your life and produces signs and wonders I look at my life today and I'm humbled I don't even know what to tell him Holy Spirit what you are seeing if there is anything good that you see in my life behind the scene there is somebody living through me if I stretch my hands is his hands what you are hearing now you are looking at a physical person but if God were to open your eyes I'm like a puppet he's speaking through me that's why the power that comes from him only flows through me to you the devils know what they are seeing the sicknesses know what they are seeing the lady who had an issue here when I was hearing those testimonies you know they were all thanking me thank daddy what I was doing in my heart is thank the real daddy the father in me the Lord of Koinonia the true apostle of this ministry not Joshua Selman I would be stupid to claim that I have the power to lead people you made a way you made a way don't know how but you did it made a way. don't know how but you did it that's my testimony for he's moved the mountain you cause walls to fall and with your power tonight that humanly speaking you don't know how it will be done that is not your business that trying to find out how it will be done is the secret to killing yourself leave that to your partner your senior partner he's the wisdom of God he's the author of scriptures he knows where he meets your answer is listen stop weeping stop crying stop looking like life is all over your head no say to the righteous there is a reason why you say to them he gave them the holy spirit he said tarry in jerusalem don't let pride make you go out and start preaching tarry until he comes Hallelujah. look what he has done with this ministry today you see let me tell you something every time I hear the reports about what God is doing we travel around all the place all the time tomorrow we're in Lagos and I see the mighty things that he does and I see people coming sometimes to enter the car people are all around trying to touch any part of my body crying man of God and I keep looking hi do I really truly in all honesty do I really have the power to solve their problems no. 
pride is what has killed many of us we drove his presence through pride yes i'm the one ah that prophetic word came from me that prayer came from me that uh fasting came from me that this my church i built it with my wisdom i studied xyz that business i i, I know these things Hi. let me tell you ask all those who know me i look like a bold person but my personal life i can be so shy especially when you start thanking me or i, I don't know where to put my face you know this type uh, we want to appreciate a very great man of God ah you have killed me I don't even know where I'm going to hide my face because I know you are lying you think you are telling the truth but it's a lie I know him just for knowledge Genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer right Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 did not just happen within a short time span now you know that the Bible is a piece of literature and it was written uh, with with honor to all the principles of literature meaning that it was written largely in summary are we together now you would think that it just happened again and again there were prophets in the bible that never met themselves they were hundreds of years apart but when you read them because you are reading a summary it looked like one just died and next week the other one started no hallelujah so lucifer was judged in Genesis 1 verse 1 God created the heavens and the earth and then the gap between Genesis 1 verse 1 1 verse 2 in theology is called the gap theory it's an attempt to explain what happened the hundreds of years apart that would have led to this chaos and confusion because Genesis 1 verse 2 is not an expression of the character of God outside of the influence of another deity the earth being dark and formless was as a result of the judgment. So what you call creation story in Genesis chapter 1 is actually a re-creation story. That was not the original creation. Are we together? Job in the height of his frustration when you read chapter 38. I'm just giving us an introduction, just a background. In chapter 38, Job was so frustrated because of his predicaments. The Bible says he summoned God and God came to him in a whirlwind and said, Who is this that dark not counsel without knowledge? He says, Gird your loins as a man and I would demand of you. Answer me, question one. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? So there was a day the foundations of the earth was laid. We don't see that in the Genesis account. Are we together now? He says, declare if thou hast understanding. Verse 2. He says, who had laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest. In fact, let me tell you this for your knowledge. I hope you realize that what we call the Garden of Eden, the Garden of the Lord, that we call Eden, where Adam and Eve, the east side of the Eden, was where they were kept. The first occupant, according to the revelation that scripture brings, in the Garden of Eden, was Lucifer himself. Thou was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. You now see the vendetta between Lucifer and man. Because Lucifer was an expression of God to the then creation. The word eternity means the formation of infinite dispensations. We are not the first of the human race. No, we are just a little above 6,000 years. Science shows us the existence of a lot of humanoid species before us. There's nothing, um, there's nothing false about it. Adam, hmm, understand what I'm saying now. I'm teaching koinonia and then those who are interested in learning through this platform. I know why I'm saying what I just said now. Adam is not the first man. No. Adam was the first man created in the image There was a dispensation where Lucifer was head over them. He was a representation. What Adam, what God brought man to do. There was a dispensation that Lucifer was mandated to be the revelation of God to them. And on account of that assignment, he's making angels, cherubs, were not made from dust. They were made from quantized light. Light, the depreciation of their body 
but the degree to which the light upon them excels that is the degree to which they have visited the throne room because every time they meet him is a law to both human and angels that as we behold him we are changed are we together now yes so lucifer it was on the strength of his build up the dexterity of his making that pride came upon him are we together yes there's no time to begin to talk about lucifer lucifer was that cherub the bible says that cover it he was in eden the garden of the lord the entire object of his making was it was it was an artistry of god and his assignment was the custodian the light bearer revelations are stored as light and that was his office the son of the morning on account of the revelations of god that he had he built pride and said do you know what if this is all that makes god god then i have the secrets to be god i will exalt myself above the stars of god he said i will be like the most high treason was found in him he wanted to run a parallel government so you can choose either god or him and there was war in heaven now don't downplay the level of lucifer's intelligence even in heaven he deceived one third of the angels wow what would he have told them that made one third of the angels to literally leave their original estate the bible says and there was judgment in heaven michael the archangel you see that they met again over the body of moses you again they met michael said don't waste my time the lord rebuke you so now it was the judgment that came as a result of the fall of lucifer when you read the book of revelations it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for lucifer that great dragon has been cast into the earth he has come with anger and fury that's why uncontrolled anger is the most classic proof that there is a spirit manipulating you yes sir lucifer came down to the earth with anger and he was hovering around the face of the waters it was the judgment of lucifer that led to genesis 1 verse 2 do you understand now so genesis 1 verse 3 is god now bringing light what light this was not sunlight i hope you know sunlight was created in day four this was the light that the life-giving factor of creation he withdrew it in the judgment of lucifer and so now god said light be that's the original hebrew rendition light be and there was light and then he began to create everything and he saw that it was good and so on and so forth and then when we get to genesis chapter 1 verse 26 this is the first classic expression that proves the triune nature of god and god said let us let us so this was this was a parliament there was a meeting going on not let me let us but this does not automatically tell you whether there are three there could be ten let us so how do we know that it is the father the son and the holy spirit are we learning next scripture very quickly matthew chapter 3 please from verse 14 this is the baptism of jesus now look up please a little background again about jesus i hope you know that jesus came to the earth for many reasons principally to be a mediator to bring many sons into glory are we together he came and as, ex and as an expression of the love of the father this was revealed through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that whosoever believes in him that report might receive the life of god in the flesh to show us that it was possible to live a victorious life the third reason why he came was to become a marking script a correction over our perceptions about god because until jesus came there were many things about god that people did not know they did not have the rich um opportunity to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit to the degree to which we enjoy he would come upon them and then go away he did not have a permanent residence within them so they credited all kinds of things to god jesus came as god's manual 
God's reference point so that everything you thought God did or was you looked at the life of Jesus to correct your orientation are we together now Matthew chapter 3 please thank you Jesus is someone learning but John forbade him saying this was Jesus at the baptism now I have need to be baptized of thee and thou comest to me and Jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he allowed him next verse now watch this and Jesus the logos of God John 1 1 remember in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God the same was with God so we see two there the word and God the same was with God even though he was God also now the Bible says and Jesus so we see that Jesus was there when he was baptized he went straight out of the water and lo the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of God are you seeing now so this is Jesus walking on earth in the flesh the heavens open and the Holy Spirit descending upon him lightning upon him like a dove 17 and then a voice which is not the Holy Spirit this is Jesus on earth this is the Holy Spirit coming and another third voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son whoever calls him father what should be his name whoever calls Jesus son must be Jesus proved that he was father when he called Jesus I mean uh, God proved that he was father when he called Jesus so Jesus the word the spirit of the living God the father one last proof in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established Matthew 28 the Great Commission from verse 18 Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth next verse go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of this is Jesus talking now baptizing them in the name of the Father of the Son of the Holy Ghost he didn't mention any fourth person so we know from the mouth of Jesus that the Godhead is Trinity Jesus himself spoke are you ready for one last proof Acts chapter 7 this was the Matthias Stephen about to be stoned Acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please Acts chapter 7 don't be tired of learning scripture it gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of God on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have it says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed when they heard these things they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth verse 55 now the bible says but he stephen now being full of the holy ghost so who was in stephen the holy spirit he looked steadfastly into heaven what did he see the glory of god and then jesus standing at the right hand so we see the holy spirit in stephen god manifesting in his glory the father and the son standing at his right hand why am i saying this thing so that you will believe from scripture not from opinion not from charismatism from scripture if your confidence is just based on what someone said it would dwindle with time but when your faith is anchored on scripture it becomes unbending you become immovable are we together now now the word spirit comes from the latin word spiritus it means breath spiritus S P I S Numa. All mean the same thing. These are expressions of spirit. Are we together? So a spirit, typically speaking, um, generally, it just means the life-giving factor of anything. The life-giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing. Are we together? General. Who is the Holy Spirit? number one the Holy Spirit is God Acts chapter 5 
from verse 3 to 4 please the holy spirit is god this was the story of ananias and sapphira we are proving that the holy spirit is not just an archangel there are many well-meaning sincere people who have carried teachings all around the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not a man the holy spirit is god in every way he's not junior to god he's not one of the errant people in heaven he is god in every way but peter said ananias why has satan filled thy heart to lie to the holy ghost are you saying that now and to keep back part of the price of the land verse 4 whilst it remained was it not thine after it was sold was it not in thine own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart thou hast not lied to men but to god peter now says you have lied to the holy ghost and then you have lied to god the holy ghost is god in every way number two very quickly who is the holy spirit the holy spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of god the holy spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of god he is not just the manifestation he is the revealer of the presence and the power of god the holy spirit benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of jesus how true based on scripture he gives omnipotence to the presence of he could only be in one location at a time but now the holy spirit has come to multiply the influence of jesus across the earth he is the continuation of the ministry of jesus but now not just localized to one man he can be everywhere at the same time so the holy spirit is a revealer he is also the manifestation of the presence of god are we learning this is very very important number three very quickly who is the holy spirit the bible calls the holy spirit the wisdom of god this is very powerful wisdom the wisdom of god isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 isaiah 11 and verse 2 and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him he says the spirit of wisdom the holy spirit is called the spirit of wisdom that means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom there are three levels of wisdom as the bible teaches there is wisdom that comes from above that is first pure there is wisdom that is scientific sophia that comes with experimentation and experience there is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic the wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above are we together the spirit of wisdom ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 paul is praying now ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the holy spirit is called the spirit of wisdom next point who is the holy spirit this is a very very important point i'm about to bring about the holy spirit the holy spirit is the author of scripture the holy spirit is the authentic author of scripture not just paul not just david the psalmist not just matthew mark luke and john the holy spirit is the author of scripture second peter chapter 1 please and verse 21 second peter chapter 1 and verse 21 second peter 1 21 hallelujah you can't find it go to second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 2 Timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture 
which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. Listen carefully. Through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Next verse. It says all scripture. How many? All scripture. Old Testament, the gospel, acts of the apostles, the epistles, revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. By inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness verse 16 he says 17 now that the man of god may be mature and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own. Is that true? The original person, thank you. Second Peter 1 21. For prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. If you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book, you will be rewarded for your intelligence, but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own. Is that true? So who really is the author of scripture? No, it can't be Peter. It can't be John. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. Why is this important? Because if you ignore the Holy Spirit in an attempt to learn scripture, you will end up in error. Listen carefully. The source of error, the real source of error is to just be scientific about the Bible and ignore the person of the Holy Spirit. In as much as the Bible... Is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the Holy Spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed. You can open it, but only the Holy Spirit can unlock the seals. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is the author of scripture. That means the next time you open your Bible to study, the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book. They only made it available to us. Holy Spirit, you are the author of scripture. Open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see. It says, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Is God blessing us? The Holy Spirit is the author of scripture. Now, the Holy Spirit was revealed in the Old Testament like we know. He came upon great men and women to do exploits. But the character of his manifestation, listen carefully you would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, the person who came closest as far as relationship with the Holy Spirit is concerned was David, the man David. Cast me not away from your presence, he said. Take not your spirit from me. Are we together? But generally speaking, the Holy Spirit would come upon men in the Old Testament, prophets, priests, kings, and then... He would perform something supernatural through them and return back. So they knew his power, but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. They experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia, the fellowship of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the Holy Spirit is ignored. It is the presence and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure. He is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom. Write this down please. It was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. You also find that in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. 
the holy spirit was the one who birthed the church the bible says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby as a family we can now cry abba father he brought us into this family acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when you read the bible says when the day of pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly verse 2 there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty a rushing mighty wind it filled the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it came and sat on each of them uh-huh verse 4 the bible says and they were filled with the holy ghost so the holy ghost the church and if the church ignores him today then will become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the holy spirit is for everyone he's not just for pastors apostles prophets, believer and non-believer and creation generally speaking it's more than just the salvation experience as you'll be learning shortly are we together praise the name of the lord because for many people the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the holy spirit here's what they tell you i'm not called into ministry just leave me i'm a businessman i will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him and go and do your crusade there show us the ancient path will you lead us along we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to end. Now listen, the Holy Spirit is not only God. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is a person. He has the attributes of personhood. This is very powerful. The Holy Spirit, I've told you here that he's not just wind. He manifests as all those elements, but he's not them. The Holy Spirit has the attributes of person, of personhood. He has a personality. What makes someone a personality? The presence of a will, the presence of emotions, the presence of an intellect. There's no time to begin to deal with this, but let's, I, I've, I've done the, this teaching um, describing the personhood of the holy spirit but for the sake of what we're dealing with tonight let's just look at it one scripture each wheel number one acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7 please very quickly help us we're proving that the holy spirit is a person the bible says when they had gone throughout all the region of galatia they were forbidden of the holy ghost he has a will the holy spirit forbade them verse 7 it says and after they were come to all of those names they went to those places but the holy spirit suffered them not he restrained them the holy spirit has an independent will it's very important first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 11 but all these walk at that one and the same self-spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills the holy spirit has a will the holy spirit has emotions ephesians 4 and verse 30 ephesians 4 and verse 30 the holy spirit has emotions the bible says grieve not the holy spirit if he was not sensitive to that action the bible would not ask you to not grieve him he says grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption the holy spirit has intellect intelligence romans 8 27 romans 8 27 the bible says he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit why because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god he 
knows what is the mind of the spirit first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 write it down please first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 we're looking at 10 and 11. the bible says but god had revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches there is intelligence with the spirit the holy spirit is not a robot there is intelligence to him he searches all things yea the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god the bible reveals to us very quickly the purpose of the holy spirit we need to know why the holy spirit was sent why do we talk so much about him why did jesus talk so much about him the holy spirit has basically a threefold a threefold ministry a threefold ministry number one he has the ministry of conviction number two the holy spirit he goes this is the scope of his assignment conviction what does it mean to convict to bring to your awareness to compel you to pay attention to an object or a truth the holy spirit he's the one behind every kind of godly conviction number two the ministry of transformation what is transformation the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience is called transformation my little children he says on whom i travail until christ be formed in you then the ministry of empowerment what does it mean to empower to empower means to engrace you to engrace you so that you are able to produce results that ordinarily you would not be able to produce are we together all of the long stories that i started with giving the theological background is to this intent listen carefully this is the core of my teaching now anywhere you find the holy spirit on earth it is one of these three things he's doing conviction transformation empowerment look at me uh, we're going to discuss his ministry uh, and the objects the recipients who are the candidates that qualify for his ministry but until then i want you to understand something every time you see an unbeliever the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation never forget this the greatest need of an unbeliever is not house rent the greatest need of an unbeliever is not the hospital the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation when a believer is saved the next assignment of the holy spirit is to sponsor transformation an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says he differeth not from a slave though he be lord of all are we together transformation then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment this is the sequence every time look just learning this alone will make you a matured christian so you you know how to bless people according to the categories when you see an unbeliever your principal assignment is to stand in partnership with the holy spirit to the end that he becomes a recipient of the life of god no matter what you do to an unbeliever if he has not received salvation you have not given him the greatest gift for a believer the greatest gift you can give a believer is an atmosphere and an information that can lead to transformation you can give miracles you can build a house you can bring breakthrough you can bring healing none of those things are superior in themselves the most superior blessing that you can give a believer is access to light illumination bringing him to a place of transformation then for a believer that is transformed the greatest need for a transformed believer is now to be able to prove and defend his proposition and for that he will need empowerment are you seeing that now just having this knowledge alone will make you such a mature christian and you will know how to help people you don't start talking about salvation to one who is already saved 
except you're just teaching him and mentoring him to also be an effective evangelist a non-believer salvation a believer transformation a transformed believer empowerment are we together and may i add that the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility when a believer is empowered he now needs character and humility because knowledge can puff up remember our teaching we just finished a series on witnesses so the holy spirit has a threefold ministry conviction transformation empowerment conviction transformation empowerment now write this down please who are the three principal recipients of the ministry of the holy spirit according to scripture there are three principal recipients of the ministry of the holy spirit number one creation you will be surprised to know that creation depends on the holy spirit to survive the holy spirit is not just a reality for christians or non-christians without the holy spirit creation cannot survive it was the lights that came from him that sponsored creation coming back again withdraw the holy spirit is not only men that would die creation will also die are we together job 34 from verse 14 and 15 the first recipient the first recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit is the entire creation from verse 14 and 15 if he set his heart upon man if he gather on to himself his spirit and his breath what happens to creation all flesh shall perish together and all man shall turn again to dust that means if god withdraws the holy spirit literally out of earth right now men will wither creation will wither science will come to naught the holy spirit is the life-giving factor of creation this is true the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation plants animals nature etc everything that was made because without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and so everything that came from him has that life and that life is the holy spirit i have profound respect for science we have been able to advance so well in science especially in recent times people are still trying to disintegrate atoms to see if they can find a lot of other things you know and so on and so forth let me tell you behind if we keep breaking down breaking down breaking down breaking down we will arrive at one conclusion the unit of life is the word of god but in that word of god is the spirit of god ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 the spirit entered me when he spake unto me verse 2 the spirit entered me so the word of god contains the spirit of god the word of god contains the power of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified it says and his brightness was like the sunlight and the rays streamed from his hand and there in the sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power when you break life into its finest what you will meet is the word of god we call it energy we call it matter i don't mean to abuse and insult science but i can tell you from the authority of scripture the spirit of god is the life factor of the entire creation are we together the second recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit according to scripture is the unbeliever the unbeliever is not supposed to be an insultive word it's a description it's a state who is an unbeliever one who has not had the opportunity to hear and to believe the gospel what is the gospel a revelation of the father's love 
revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, man and creation being the object of that love and that sacrifice. That is the gospel. For God so loved the world, John 3 and verse 16, that he gave his one and only begotten, now the firstborn among we the begotten, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, the Bible says, but have life eternal. Unbelievers. He has a ministry to unbelievers. What is his ministry to unbelievers? Conviction. The Holy Spirit has a ministry of conviction to unbelievers. John chapter 16, please. John chapter 16. Let's look at verse, let's start from verse 13. John chapter 16. It says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Please back down a little. I'm looking for the scripture where, find it for me if you can. Okay, I think that should be John 16 from verse 7. Go down to verse 7. Same scripture, verse 7 please. John 16 and verse 7. Now listen, it says, Nevertheless, Jesus is speaking now. I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, the comforter will not come to you. Is the Greek word alos parakletos. The word alos means of the same material and the same mission. The opposite is heteros. Alos parakletos, the paraclet. He says, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8. When he is come, what will be his mission? His first assignment is he will reprove the world of three things. Number one, of sin. Number two, of righteousness. Number three, of judgment. He buttresses on that point. Verse 9. Of sin because they believe not on me. So what is the sin there? Unbelief. Of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Listen to me. The primary assignment of the Holy Spirit to unbelievers is conviction. This is powerful. So whilst you are listening to me now and the world is listening to me, assuming I'm on a crusade ground while I am teaching, sharing like Reinhard Bonke of blessed memory, sharing like billy graham of blessed memory whilst you are talking it doesn't matter what expression it comes with in that crusade ground the holy ghost is hovering around the people bringing conviction what does it mean to convict to bring an awareness to plant in you seriousness over something conviction an awareness nobody sustains the power to save any sinner just with intelligence and oratory it takes the power of the holy spirit because there is a law that works in every sinner romans chapter 8 and verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation it says to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit here it is verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free not just from sin but a law of sin that leads to death every time you are sharing the gospel please listen to me believers every time you are talking to an unbeliever you are telling him about jesus the love of jesus i want you to expect at the back of your mind that the paraclete is there with you creating conviction this is what happened in the book of acts chapter 3 when they came and met the people they said who are these guys who are drunk with new wine and peter said no we are not drunk with new wine this is only nine o'clock in the morning but this is that this is that which prophet joel spoke about and now he began he went to david he went to joel and when he spoke to them the bible says they were caught to the heart that's the holy spirit and they said men and brethren what do we do he says repent for the remission of your sin and then you will be baptized and you will receive this promise for this promise is unto you and unto your children your children's children as many as are far off and in one day three thousand people came to jesus the convicting power of the holy spirit he does not only convict he compels is the greek word anakazo the compelling power of the spirit so that he will have men he can convict 
he also sustains the power to draw them from wherever they are and bring them to the atmosphere where they can hear the gospel this is powerful this is why we pray for people listen to me this is the entire idea about wanting more and more people to hear the gospel it's not just a celebration of crowd to show that a man of god has such influence over a city no jesus died for men largely and then creation so if he wants you to truly be an advocate of this gospel there must be a way of bringing men to you for god so loved the world why do we pray every time that god brings people to this place we don't just pray because we're ambitious people trying to look for a way of building an excelling career not at all we realize that until men come they will not have an opportunity to hear the gospel thank god for internet right now there are tens of thousands of people following online from different nations and they now have the opportunity to hear to be mentored to be built everybody say conviction so whilst you prepare to do the work of an evangelist which is a mandate for all believers you must know at the back of your mind that while I'm teaching, because some of you are not able to win souls because you think, I don't speak very well, I don't know all of the scriptures. If the Holy Ghost is not with you, if you are not conscious of his ministry to convict, you will only waste your time trying to talk to a sinner. He will listen to you talk for over 30 minutes and you say, in this book, what happened? And you begin a debate there that ends you in anger. Many people have tried to go and preach the gospel without the consciousness of his convicting power. Let me tell you this. When the power of the Holy Spirit to convict is in a place, you can sing a song about redemption and say, come to Jesus. And people will run and come out because in that song, once the message of salvation is captured in it, I am not ashamed of the gospel, he says, for it is the power, not just the suggestion, the power of God unto salvation. Say amen. So that you leave this place this night conscious of the fact that the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. Now you are not afraid of their faces because sometimes you'll be talking to people that when you look at their faces as if their face is so discouraging. Will this guy ever give his life to Christ? Whilst you're talking, they're not even giving you the attention. Don't mind them. The Holy Ghost is walking. At the end of that, you will see, let's listen, go back to your family members. Some of you have family members that are not saved. You've been advising them. That's why they are not saved. They need more than an advice. They need the gospel. The only vaccination for sin is the gospel. The way your life is going, why don't you become a better person? That's counseling. That's not the gospel. The gospel is a revelation of the love of the father jesus must be mentioned for it to be the gospel the love of the father must be mentioned for it to be the gospel the sacrifice of jesus are we blessed conviction let's hurry up what is his ministry the third recipient of his ministry let's do a quick recap number one the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation number two unbelievers number three believers he has a ministry to believers in as much as he plays that role now let me tell you this please look up you have to learn this when come dave let me use you watch this assume with me for a moment that this gentleman is one who is an unbeliever he's not been born again he's not giving his life to jesus okay so i am teaching in church now and the convicting power of the holy spirit comes upon him watch this as i lead him to christ usually you would notice in the context of my prayer i might not even mention the word holy spirit why because there is no other name under heaven given unto men the bible says by which we must be saved the office of salvation is the office of the Christ. Even though the administrator of salvation is the Holy Spirit. You have to understand this. Jesus today is seated at the right hand of the Father. So when you sing a beautiful song, Into my heart, into my heart, 
Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Remember, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Beautiful. Now, he receives the life of God. You say Jesus is in his heart, you are right. But the personality that comes in honor to that prayer is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, remember, he's the extension of the presence of Jesus. So it is true from scripture that Jesus lives in his heart. But the personality that lives is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what we call eternal life. He does not bring eternal life. He is the life of God. Are we blessed? So Jesus is in his heart. But it is the Holy Spirit representing the presence of Jesus. He lives in him. Jesus is in heaven as a person. I hope you know that Jesus left with his body as a man. He did not leave his body behind. The fact that Jesus left with his body is the most classic proof that he's returning. Because you need a body to operate on earth. It was difficult for him to come the first time. He needed to rally around a woman to donate her womb for nine months. Now you don't need that again. Any moment he can come because he left with his body. The next time you doubt if Jesus is coming back, remember he has a body that he can use. Are we blessed? So the Holy Spirit comes in honor to that salvation prayer now watch this this gentleman just gave his life to christ he is now a believer what then is the next assignment of the holy spirit let me tell you this listen carefully he is now he's received jesus christ but he's not transformed his senses are still deadened he's still living in the flesh he's still a carnal man even though a saved one now the holy spirit begins the journey that we call repentance repentance is a journey it's not just a one-off thing no repentance means to realign your mind are we together now transformation is repentance hmm. so he says repent for the kingdom of god is within your reach now to repent means to realign your thinking and your understanding because your living comes from your thinking effective living comes from effective thinking are we learning God bless you so now for a believer what is the first assignment of the holy spirit my concern now is for a believer we know that for an unbeliever his job is pretty simple to bring conviction to the end that the unbeliever will hear and receive the gospel the benefit of receiving that gospel is the life of god there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son what is the assignment of the holy spirit now to a believer is found in first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 write this down please the first assignment of the holy ghost to a believer is to activate your spiritual senses before the word of god starts coming into you you are already dead in spiritually. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Please help us. The Bible says, but the natural man. Please read with me. It's projected. One to read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. So even though this man is saved. Listen. If you leave that man this way many pastors and many leaders are, are listening to me do not leave members just born again and leave them there that harvest will rot and there will it will not be fruits that abide because even though they are saved they cannot do much for the kingdom because that transformation has not happened so what we largely do in church is that we save sinners and now they become believers in christ which is true and it's a fact and we leave them there after a few months, we make them pastors. We make them deacons. We make them leaders in that state. Listen, if you are not in the kingdom, and even if you are in the kingdom and you are not transformed, many spiritual activities will not make sense. For instance, why will a believer lock his, himself in a room and dance and say, I am walking my way to victory? What does that mean? 
if an if an unbeliever or a believer that is not transformed sees you he says this christianity has turned adults into fools it's foolishness unto him why will you say to sow a seed and you are saying you are using that seed to break lack to break pop it doesn't make sense why will you be praying in some kind of language you are just praying gibberish for hours and you are praying and you believe you are generating power who said that's how they generate power are you seeing now so when you see anybody laughing at your experience your christian experience you already know the category now so you can show the person mercy by saying i think i know what you need you look when you want to bless people with books you gauge their spiritual levels what book will help this person now oh you were saved that's why great men like Reinhard Bonke, when you were saved on their crusade grounds, they had books that they would give you to help explain salvation and begin to show you the next step. What we do is that most times when the average believer is saved, in truth, he does not know what is the next port of call. He doesn't know what else to do. If he's fortunate, they can say, come to church. If it's a church that has a methodical system of growth and development, then happy for that man. Otherwise, he will have to freelance his ideas about spiritual growth. Are you seeing why some of us are not having efficiency in our spiritual experience? Your organs of interaction. Suddenly the things you once laughed at now begins to make sense. What is this about praying in tongues? Ba, 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 ba. All these people are shouting. And now the Holy Ghost quickens you. You are now alive to Christ. It now begins to make sense to you. Isn't it amazing that you used to laugh at people who were crying. Whilst they are prophesying, they would kneel down and lift their hands. And you laugh and say, church people. Now look, you are, you are caught in that trap. The Holy Ghost himself. Remember when you would stand at crusade grounds from a distance and laugh and say Nigerians religion is what poor people do and and the Holy Ghost is just watching you now look 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 at you you are at the forefront of that advocacy listen do you know why I'm teaching you this because true love is based on understanding not just emotion now that you know this when unbelievers or baby christians as we call them when they laugh at certain advanced things we do in the kingdom there's no point looking down on them and insulting them you show compassion because they are communicating their level of infancy you don't flog a baby when he pulls on the ground or when he moves around playing he's a child but when he's five year old and a five year old child and he behaves like that now you know that something is wrong with that child and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to build you up you see that to make you wise unto salvation the organs of interaction with the holy spirit that's the first assignment of the holy spirit to believers please learn this we're going to pray shortly the organs of interaction he activates your spiritual senses the bible calls it being alive unto god now the fire the passion you now understand why we pray now you understand why we do the things that we do and with our hands lifted up we will worship our king and with our hands lifted up we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell them we love in our king so when they do not understand why we do the things we do why will someone tell you you are a stupid man going to church every time and you can look at the person and say god bless you from whence does that compassion come they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me the 
Holy Spirit. Listen. So that your intercession can now be effective. Some of you have loved ones who live around you, but they fight anything that is pro-spirituality. The key is not to look down on them. The key is to begin to pray the prayer of mercy that the eyes of their understanding be open. Some of you is your spouse. You love God, but your spouse does not seem to have that kind of passion and zeal. Now you know what to pray. God help him is not the prayer. You must be intentional and methodical with your prayer. The diagnosis to that situation is that that person is saved, but is still in the flesh. He's still a carnal man. And the Bible says he's a natural man. He cannot understand the things of the spirit. They are spiritually discerned. So when the Holy Spirit comes, now he begins to help you. Fasting now begins to make sense. Worship now begins to make sense. You can wake up in the night and pray and not feel guilty for stretching yourself that much. Coming to church, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord most people think church is a place for people who are poor and broke and are struggling so they just quickly come and receive breakthroughs from god once they are all right they wave until the day they are in trouble again no no they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god the bible says even in old age that means they should be there in a long time they will be fat and flourishing The second ministry of the Holy Spirit to believers. Have I lost you? Are we still together? Now I'm, I'm zooming in on his ministry to believers. Number one is activating your spiritual senses. Number two, revelation and understanding of scripture. This is the second ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please, please pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit has the exclusive know-how to make scripture open to the believer. You have to study scripture by submitting to his influence. Reading the Bible just as a, an intelligent Christian manual. Let me tell you what you will find if you read the Bible without him. You will find a plethora of controversial statements. At the end of your study, you would arrive at one conclusion. Both the writers and the God who led them, they are not thinking well. If you read the Bible without the Holy Ghost, you will see lots of things, the mistake. I hope you know that the personality of the writers rubbed into the writings too. So it takes the Holy Spirit to, to perform that surgery and separate what came as a result of the limitation of the writers versus the intent, what God intended to be understood. That's why he's called helper. Bazanji Soroba. Bazanji Kunyaba. My helper. As I study scripture. I learned the ways of God. John 14 and verse 26. Just two or three scriptures very quickly so that we'll tie up this teaching. Is God helping us? John 14, 26. Help us please, media. John 14, 26. But the comforter, now you know the word, Allos Paracletos, the paraclet of God, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name what will he do he will teach you all things everybody say the holy spirit is a teacher one more time please say the holy spirit is a teacher he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance i rebuke memory loss in the name of jesus christ the bible says the holy spirit can bring to remembrance whatsoever i have said to you that means there is nobody that is dull the holy ghost can bring to remembrance he can bring to remembrance are we together john chapter 16 from verse 13 now very quickly john 16 from verse 13 how be it look up please jesus began to speak 
he says i have many things to tell you he was talking to the disciples but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you my goodness into all truth we're coming there he will not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he shall speak he says and he will show you things to come apostle how do you know what will happen he will show you things to come he didn't say he will show prophets things to come he will show you things to come he can let you know that this man coming is your destiny helper position yourself well do not miss that opportunity he will show you things to come so the ministry of the revelation and the understanding of scripture you find out that you have difficulty understanding scripture you can call on the holy spirit with every sense of humility and faith spirit of the living god you were sent to open up scripture open it up open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from thy word and suddenly you begin to study things that you never saw there were oases that you are not seeing it does not mean it's not there your eyes must be opened in the name of jesus christ number three very quickly what is the ministry of the holy spirit to the believer number three guidance and direction this is very powerful guidance and direction now we can read john 16 and verse 13 proper john 16 13 then we go to isaiah 30 21 john 16 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you everybody say guide you truth is dangerous without guidance it's not only a lie that destroys truth can destroy many people have been destroyed by the truth he must guide you when you're in the kitchen not every part of the knife has the rubber handle is that true there is a part you use to cut and then there is a part that you can hold do you know that as profitable as that knife is you can hold it wrongly to your detriment there are women who have used knife in the kitchen and mistakenly cut themselves that was not what the knife was meant for but it happened anyway you can use truth the devil can conjure one truth into another many people who have gone into error in the body of christ is not lies that de that deceive them is truth without balance the devil can use it is written and destroy you don't say once it's in the bible i will do it you must be guided there are many things in the bible demons spoke men spoke in the depravity of your heart it's all in the bible the bible is a prophetic book you can make it speak any language you want the spirit of god needs to guide men are we together isaiah 30 21 i'll explain to you shortly the difference between guidance and direction the bible says and thy ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left psalm 23 the classic sign that reveals the ministry of the holy spirit to guide 23 verse 1 media please help us the lord is my shepherd say it after me the lord is my shepherd hallelujah the lord is my shepherd i shall not want verse 2 the bible says he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me everybody say he leads me he leads me beside the still waters uh-huh verse 3 he restores my soul again his leadership comes he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake now look up please let me explain to you the difference between direction and guidance direction tells you where to go guidance tells you how to get there direction tells you where to go guidance tells you how to get there when you are walking with the holy spirit you will not get direction every day sometimes in a whole year you may just get two or three instructions for your direction what you need every day is guidance i can direct you 
until you want to go down to the overflow outside go this way turn left go right that's direction they are outside but guidance will tell you as you come down there is a staircase here be careful are we together that's guidance so here's what the word of god says it says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path a light to your path is direction a lamp to your feet is guidance listen to me most of us have received divine direction you have not received guidance you need to pray for both direction and guidance if you're with me say amen and to do both is no other person than the Holy Spirit himself. He can guide, he can direct. Next ministry, are we together? There are five major ministries of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. We're almost there. Number one, activating your spiritual senses unto godliness, unto righteousness. Number two, he brings the capacity to understand scripture number three the ministry of guidance and direction ready for number four number four the fourth ministry of the holy spirit in the life of a believer is the ministry of renewal and transformation renewal and transformation philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 what is renewal what is transformation aligning your mind your thinking your belief systems to the ways of god let this mind be in you it says which was also in christ jesus please look up jesus did not just excel because he was the son of god there was a belief system there was a philosophy he had an ideology that made the holy spirit comfortable walking in him and he says permit that mindset which was in christ jesus to also be in you hallelujah first Corinth, second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 popular scripture second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 the bible says but we all how many of us how many of us everyone can participate every believer in christ is a candidate for renewal and transformation we all with open face beholding as in a glass or a mirror the glory of god he says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as sponsored by the spirit of god the holy spirit that means i can evolve to more superior versions of myself this is good news the yesterday version of me may be weak the yesterday version of me may be prayerless. The yesterday version of me may not be powerful. Demons and witches and wizards can just play you like a tennis ball. But when you submit to the ministry of renewal and transformation, give yourself a little time and you emerge a giant and a champion. I went up by revelation. In this kingdom, we go up by revelation. Are we together? Please help them. I went up help them please help them i went up by revelation please take him i think he may need some medical attention something is wrong there i went up by revelation transformation and renewal now please look up the holy spirit there is a relationship between the word of god and the spirit of god it is the unity of the word and spirit everybody say the word and spirit it is not the word alone it is not the spirit alone for a very long time in the body of christ look up please everyone for a very long time in the body of christ there has been a conflict among believers as to the word and the spirit we have a section of believers who are word people they don't have any business with the holy spirit word then we have other charismatics who are spirit people power manifestation no word the bible never teaches us to choose either the word or the spirit it is always the spirit and the bride say come the idea of dichotomizing the ministry of the word and the holy spirit is not an accurate exegesis of scripture the holy spirit takes advantage of the word of god and now begins that mentorship it's like a student in class you need both the textbook and the lecturer is that true for effective study and knowledge even though you have the textbook it's not enough 
you can read up here and there but for methodical growth you need the ministry of the lecturer and the manual the lecturer helps you to explain because in most cases you are reading his own book transformation and renewal transformation and renewal the last ministry of the holy spirit in the life of a believer is empowerment pay attention we're about to pray empowerment pray in the spirit in one minute empowerment isaiah 61 empowerment 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 the ministry of empowerment isaiah 61 please pray sikete barakatosh kelene makatas kalanda brateskia hallelujah praise the name of the lord please give us isaiah 61 look up everybody isaiah 61 from verse 1 it says the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord hath anointed everybody say anointed the word anoint is the root word ordain to ordain means to legitimize an operation it means to commission it means to make legal your operation it means approved by an authority are we together so when we say you are ordained we don't just mean oil was poured upon you no oil can be poured upon you and yet you are not ordained to anoint means to legitimize an operation it's an ordination the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted ladies and gentlemen it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted you don't bind up the brokenhearted just by counseling you need the anointing he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty it takes the anointing more than oratory to tell people you are free you can declare you are free and yet they are not free but with the anointing you can truly declare that people are free and they return free acts chapter 1 and verse 8 jesus himself is speaking now acts chapter 1 and verse 8 please give it to us acts 1 verse 8 but ye shall receive power ye shall receive power koinonia ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost not outside of the holy spirit please look up it is possible to have power outside of the holy spirit power of witchcraft power of satanism diabolism etc that have all kinds of side effects but if it is the power from on high your power in this kingdom is a derivative of your relationship with the holy spirit for instance if you go to meet a spiritualist or a herbalist he's not looking for a relationship from you he just needs to know what do you want and immediately he, he doesn't even need to know your name but when you come to god god give me power he takes away your hand and say i want your heart first i want a relationship the power of a believer is a derivative of a relationship so if you come to me and you say apostle i need power i will first lead you to the custodian of that power who is the holy spirit you shall receive power now you understand after that the holy ghost is come not before not during you engage his ministry then you receive power and the power will help you to be a witness unto me in jerusalem judea samaria to the uttermost part of the earth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. This was Peter in the house of Cornelius. This was the salvation of the Gentiles. This is the first time from scripture that the Gentiles will be coming into the faithful. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. Everybody say the Holy Ghost and power. One more time. Say the Holy Ghost and power. It says he went about. You would see him walking alone, but he was not alone. He went about. Not they went about.
he went about but was not alone my goodness from today somebody will go about but you are not alone he went about doing banking but you are not alone he went about in politics but you are not alone he went about as a man of god doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him the most important message is not power was with him god was with him for god are we together was with him write this as we attempt to conclude the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing just help those under the anointing my god the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing please hear me believers you know we are sent to the body of christ more than just this family this fold and i have to tell you this it is easy to delve into witchcraft delve into spiritism delve into all kinds of extra biblical practices and all kinds of demonic activities in sincere search for power there are sincere people who just desired power for ministry power for living and because they yes what is the power do this do that do this do that and because of our desperation for results i'm not saying this in in a in a way that 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 administers condemnation but it's a call for us to be careful there is nobody who is truly empowered in this kingdom genuinely empowered where came from the holy spirit so the anointing and the power that we have is a derivative of our relationship just help those under the anointing now watch this some of you if you have a card maybe a debit card or so and if you have a child or somebody you see someone else with that debit card there are two things that that message will tell you either you are a thief you stole the debit card or you have a relationship with the owner of the debit card is that true if you see me with your debit card i have a right to meet you and say sorry i saw this man with your debit card and you say yes i gave it to him as proof of a relationship so when you see people carry power and yet you the custodian of that power is still a mystery and is distant to them something is wrong The power that the believer commands in this kingdom genuine authentic spiritual power is a product of relationship is traceable to him the more we love him the more we spend time in his presence the more we grow in fact did you know that some of the most powerful people it was not even power that drew them to god they loved God with all their hearts. Lord, I love you with all my heart. I seek to see your kingdom come. I seek to see your glory revealed. And while you spend time in fellowship, in worship, study of scripture, learning his ways, soaking in that atmosphere. One day, like a brother in church, they will just give you the mic and say, please, can you lead 10 minutes prayer? And you stand and hold that mic. And the only thing you remember saying is let us pray there's fire everywhere and now people are wondering what is that a little subgroup bible study dear sister can you help us just share something and you just bring a little piece of your secret place and whilst you are sharing people are looking and saying from whence come at this you see when you see that kind of result as soon as you are done you run back to him i have found the secret the secret of relevance i have found the secret so the more i stay with you the more men need me the more i stay with you the more you announce me the secret of being visible is to be hidden with him i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings 
your influence is all over me yeah I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I have overcome Say, I am victorious Yes, I am overcome. I am victorious. Listen to me. If you embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit, He will take away shame and even reproach from your life. My call tonight, therefore, beloved people, most of the things we have been searching for in the hands of men can only be found with Him. The fame you are looking for, the visibility you are looking for, He is the custodian of it. The power for miracles, signs, and wonders. You may receive impartation from men, but genuine grace that lasts only come from him. You want to have understanding of the word of God. You want to walk in victory. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. Triumph is only resident with him. But you see, the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He will not struggle and wrestle with the spirit of man. You have your own will. The Bible says, as many as received him. That means he can be rejected. It says, you shall receive power. You can reject it. Please listen to me. There are some of you here who are in ministry or have a call to serve the purposes of the kingdom in the fivefold. Some of you are called to business like we've discussed in our series on witnesses. Can I tell you this? In all your getting, until you truly encounter the ministry of the holy spirit the holy spirit is not just useful for fivefold ministry he will bring one business idea from your spirit that will cause nations to celebrate you forever look what he's done with our lives look at it he's a master at bringing beauty and glory there are things when you see men cannot do this brothers and sisters no man can do this except God be with him. Therefore, I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sent by God to make men. Sent by God to produce champions. You embrace his ministry. I assure you there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to bring you down. No, no divination, no enchantment whatsoever. The Holy Spirit and his power, the Holy Spirit, God never sends us alone. The Holy Spirit makes us and he sends us and the Lord walking with them. Businessman, hear me. You don't just need ideas and partners. You need the Holy Spirit. Politician, hear me. You don't just need intelligence and an opportunity to make policies. You need the Holy Spirit. He was the wisdom behind the exploits of Daniel. The creativity behind Joseph. The power that strengthened Deborah. The intelligence that led Esther to become queen. The wisdom that made Ruth become the wife of Boaz. Samson. The spirit of might that came upon him to become a mighty man. Did you not see how Samson defeated Goliath? Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of this man. 
the holy spirit you have embraced things of lesser value now it's time to give him a chance you have embraced money you have embraced fame you have embraced the complimentary card of those you perceive to be great yet ignoring him you have a garage in your house for your car because you consider it valuable you have a jewelry store or a, a jewelry collector for all your expensive jewelries show me the place you have prepared for him as proof that you value him you have a store where you keep food in your house because you know that man shall not live by bread alone but there is bread in the equation of his living so you kept space for bread who taught us to ignore the ministry of the holy spirit so much we have interpreted him today as a nuisance to civilization when you talk to a businessman about the holy spirit ah, leave that church thing we are trying to seal a deal it is vain to wake up in the morning only to sleep late in the night eating the bread of sorrow it is only god that can give men rest hear me brothers and sisters we're about to pray god is calling you to a higher call a higher dimension it's time to stop living an ordinary natural life no your life will not produce glory when it is ordinary the holy spirit you can invite him and he can come and you can start a journey that journey of power are you ready to pray when you pray then i will speak over your heart listen the holy spirit is not looking for an affair he's looking for a relationship a relationship that lasts come after 30 40 50 years of your life He's still your best friend. I introduce to you one who is not just God alone, but he one Holy Spirit. I need you afresh in my life. I confess my need for you. Go ahead and pray. Oh, I confess my need for you, Spirit of the Living God. Shena masala manana ne malana manana tiara dada. Shela kete brenda kete balasha. Are you praying? I need you. I need you. I need you. Listen. Look up. I used to think I love you was the most powerful sentence in English until I found out that there is a sentence higher than it. I need you. I need you is an expression of total dependence. You are my life. I don't want to patch you among my many activities. I don't want to use you as a spare tire. So I keep running with my mind. Then when I encounter trouble, where is that errand boy called the Holy Ghost? Come and help me get a miracle. When you are done, he says, now you can find your way. You must embrace the presence of the Holy Spirit. Cry for a relationship. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your voice in one minute. Don't be distracted. Pray. He is the maker of men. He is the lifter of men. The Holy Ghost is the helper. in the name of jesus 
listen we'll sing this song just once it just came to my spirit spirit lead me where my trust is without bones let me walk upon the wall help me wherever you will take me deeper than my feet For the last time, Spirit leads me in. Let me walk upon the waters. Take me deeper than my feet could ever walk. I pray for you a hunger for intimacy with the Holy Spirit may that grace come upon you as individuals as businessmen as members of Parliament as a couple may homes in this place become tabernacles for the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ not only your heart but may your house become an altar it says above the cherubims below the mercy seat there i will meet with you that you will make room for him the grace to wake up in the night and while others are sleeping you are fellowshipping you are the lover of my life i cannot do without you desperate for you thirsty for you you are life to me you are not a charm or a genie that i use for miracles i place priority on you i need you with my life hallelujah listen to me when you find him you find power when you find him you find influence when you find him your fear dies you no longer fear the future will i be great will i last all that is nonsense when you find him but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day you can tell that your ministry or your business 30 40 years will still be blazing fire and bringing glory to the name of the lord we live in an uncertain world almost nothing is certain right now but i tell you you can find certainty in an uncertain world let him hold your hands let him hold your ministry let him hold your family apostle you don't know what will happen i'm afraid for my children i don't even know what they will learn commend them to the holy spirit and remain a steward while he remains the owner and you can find rest otherwise hypertension will destroy you in such a world that we live in when you find him you find life listen to me our time is fast spent i have just two or three minutes zaria abuja following online i want to make an altar call right now please no movement let's minimize movement this is a very solemn before i speak blessings upon you i just sense in my heart to make the altar call there are people who are here and you are saying apostle whilst i heard you talk about the holy spirit he began to do that work you said he does in unbelievers the work of conviction and you are saying my life is not all right i need to come to him wherever you are if you are in this auditorium up the balcony scattered around and then all the overflows down to the basement outside our zaria family those following from whatever nation whatever continent i'm going to count one to five and whilst i do this i want you to run and come and stand it's always my honor and my joy do not neglect the ministry of the holy spirit you know what he's already doing for some of you he's speaking to you and saying are you going to sit back and assume you don't know i'm the one nudging you make your way to the front one 
don't allow one person to be the first to come quickly leave your seat please stand please stand please stand come quickly take over take over i have come to the end of myself take over take over i have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of keep coming There is nobody who sustains the ability to respond to this call if the holy spirit does not help him for no man can say jesus is lord except by the spirit and no man having the spirit can call jesus accursed ladies and gentlemen my brothers and sisters young old alike thank you thank you for the courage to respond to this nudging of the spirit i taught you already that whilst we speak we are mortal men with our limited expressions but in the midst of the frailties of our communication the holy ghost himself behind the speakings bringing this conviction some of you are crying there's no reason to be afraid don't be ashamed of your tears you are before the god of all flesh you're not attending a funeral jesus is here giving you life even life everlasting john 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says but i am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly all those in the overflows down to the basement outside azaria family you who is watching from your home whatever tv station you're watching from and then watching from the internet all our social media platforms now is an opportunity to tell jesus yes now is an opportunity to tell him i'm i want to win this war of destiny my life is empty without you and for all of you who are in front please lift your right hand very high to the heavens and you say this after me knowing that jesus is here he does not condemn you he comes as a loving father the spirit of the living god representing the unlimited presence of jesus even in this place he is here to help to impart eternal life and to begin a journey with you that only ends in victory say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i love you with all my heart tonight i have heard your word i believe with my heart that you are savior you are lord you are king i confess my inability to help myself therefore help me i decree and declare that i am a recipient of your life your grace and your power i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life from tonight the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you as always we present to you these ones that jesus died for thank you for the grace and the ability to save even to the uttermost i pray in the name of jesus that you will take these ones and that they become part of this great family of faith by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven in the name of jesus the lord gives you a new beginning the power of satan sin the grave and hell is broken over your life i decree and declare that from today you begin to go forward upward and victorious only in the name of jesus christ i commend you finally to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit may you be built may you mature and be established in righteousness for in jesus name i pray amen and amen thank you for making this bold declaration i'd like you to just 
follow the counselor there's a a gentleman and a lady they're waving their hands here please i'd like you to follow them there'll be a group of counselors that will receive you just for a few minutes and you'll be back to your seat koinonia let's honor them all the overflows there should be people waving their placards at you let's receive the blessing as we wrap up for tonight hallelujah amen let's honor and bless the lord for the adorable ministry of minister chi thank you thank you thank you so much To bless means to empower so that you can excel. That's what it means to bless. To bless means to receive the engracing that sponsors your excelling. That's what it means to bless. Empower to succeed. We do not just advance. The Bible says it is the Lord. Remember again, the primary ministry of the Holy Spirit to the unbeliever is conviction. And then it leads to salvation. The primary ministry of the Holy Spirit to the saved believer is transformation. The primary ministry of the Holy Spirit to the transformed believer is empowerment. And then his ministry to the empowered believer is character and humility. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive the blessing? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Your week beginning, let it be a week of excellence for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the excellence that emanates from your Christian life draw many to Jesus this week. I pray for your prayer life. A fresh hunger like never before. Let it rest upon you in Jesus name. I decree and declare that your passion and your hunger for the word. Let it be ever increasing in Jesus name. And now I pray. For some of you let this week be the week that you start a fresh relationship with the holy spirit and i pray for you the empowerment that comes from fellowship with him in the name of jesus may that empowerment speak over your life i release you this week for signs and wonders for favor and increase for influence and greatness for speed of accomplishment in the name of jesus christ every power that is not of the christ every spirit that is not of the christ i declare it finds no expression in your life this week you are blessed you are highly favored in the name of jesus christ i declare that the grace for honor is upon you you rise up above your contemporaries in the name of jesus christ and everything that has refused to walk in your life this week go back and try it again together as a family of faith we remain ambassadors for the kingdom witnesses promoting the interest of jesus in the name of jesus christ sickness is far from you death is far from you defeat is far from you failure is far from you no weapon fashioned against you will prosper and every tongue that rises up against you may my god judge in the name of jesus in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain